check, 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 check. Today's QOD, dogs or cats? You a dog person or cat person? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Sierra, Sierra says cats. Dogs, cats, both, all maniacal cats, all caps. Serious about it. Serious about it. I'd say we're both. They they can be equally annoying. Ours, at least. Like Aria last night, it was it was we had like severe thunderstorm rolling in and it was all spooky outside. And the cat is like, hey, I wanna go out. I'm like, hey, how about we not? There's like tornadic activity. Let's just not. She's like, oh, but I want to. So I brought her inside and she proceeded to make a ton of noise all night. A ton of noise. You could hear this cat eating. What does that mean? Starting off the stream with some in in studio heckling early. Early, you could you could you could say both. Both's fine. Both is fine. Hey, Elise, thanks so much for the heart me there. Greatly appreciate that. We're just jumping on a minute early. Getting rock and rolling. Dog and bird, Leslie. Brought our cat with you from New Zealand to Canada. Wow. Lots of cats, lots of both. <laughs> Danny says, uh, both, but I know more about cats. My elderly dog always confuses me. You know, um, I feel like our dogs are more predictable. The cats, it's like no matter what it is, it has to be her idea. The predictable part of, of the cat is that she demands to be fed at X times per day. Uh, and also she's a scrapper. Like she wants to go outside, um, and still likes to hunt and, uh, and will scrap with, with the other neighborhood cats that, that wander into her, her territory. She's like, oh no. And she will win. She's a tiny little cat, but she, she's a scrapper. Sierra, have a basset hound and two cats. Cats steal your seat all the time, but the dog is always the one. Always on. It's good to see everybody here. Oh, uh, ranting without a fence yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. It does complicate the living situation, having, having animals. It definitely does. It definitely does. And if you have kids, there are things you have to think about there, too, because a, a lot of a lot of animal breeds are more kid friendly than others. Uh, yard yard area is something you have to take into account, too. Right. Cats can be mean, Chelsea. Chelsea. I mean, I guess it, it depends, but they definitely can. Aria's she's a sweetheart cat. Navy is to the point where she finally like approaches Aria, the cat. And it's like, it's my kitty. And we'll pet her. And I've showed her like the areas like under the chin where she likes to be petted and she'd get all squirmy. Here we go, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like squeezes her like a tube of toothpaste. Like she's interesting. <laughs> interesting. They can be. I mean, uh, growing up, we had a number of cats and, and there were a couple that were are probably demonically possessed. Michelle, I am on. Oh, well, I started just a couple minutes early. But, yeah, we had the time change. So, this may be earlier than you're used to if you're not uh, if you're not in the U.S. where daylight savings time is, is a thing. Christian Museum Girl, thanks for the share. Greatly appreciate it. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, Keola Jenkins, welcome to the Gosh Hecken fam. Glad to have you here. Michelle, Heather, Elise Newman, Fane, Diana Galvin, Andromeda, Amber, Justina, Belinda Small, Elise, again there, Justina, again, La Book Dragon, Kyra, you. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love. Inspector Claudine, Dee that's nice. Walter Nitty, I like it. I like it. So we, we chose Aria for our cat's name because she's a scrapper. Um, and also because she... She came with the house. Like we moved in and this cat was just like, hey, I live here. And we're like, oh, okay. And she's in in and outdoor. She's much more indoor now. She's like a bougie scrapper cat that has, uh, or she's a scrapper cat. 
missing part of her ear, missing part of her tail, but now it's very, very bougie. Like, only likes to lay on the expensive blankets. Uses Luna, our golden doodle, like she's a big bed. Last night, I was walking through whenever the weather was getting crazy, and I was up just, just watching everything, making sure we were in the clear. I turn the corner, and she's... She's, you know, it looks like she's giving Luna a massage, like kneading her, getting her ready to, to use as a bed. And be the G cheers to Patrick Mahomes. He rescued the Chiefs again. Always does, man. Always does. Artinas, Candy, thanks so much for the, uh, for the shares there as well. Securing the doors, Subeka. Yeah, that's what they were giving me shit about. The hecklers. The, in the in-studio hecklers, they went like this. Did you have to secure the doors? Did you have to hold the door? Did you have to hold door? No, I didn't this time. When does Candy get her kitty? Uh, Candy Thunder has been sending me a lot more puppy pictures than kitty pictures. I don't know that you've ever sent me a picture of a kitty and you've been like, I need it. But puppy pictures, I'll get like two per month. Well, she's like, okay, I know we can't get one, but seriously. And will show me, show me little doodle pictures. Candy Thunder, thanks for the share. Greatly appreciate that. Cassie Overkill Mill, thanks for the shares there as well. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, Raul, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. Bacon biscuits? There you go. Neither good without June. Some people just aren't aren't animal people. I get it. Cassie Overkill, Subeka, Danny, Becky, thanks for the shares. Jurors, see you there as well. Storm sitting St. Louis area around 6. Looks like tomorrow. Love storm season. You know, I, I'm a fan as well. However, post Joplin tornado now when it gets eerie out and and indicative of some tornadic activity i've got like i can't sleep i have to just stare at the sky on the radar and make sure we have a clear path to a storm shelter and I, it freaks me out freaks me out freaks me out but we got some history with that michelle thanks so much for the share there mj newcomb red red the, uh, red oh, okay i got you uh welcome there as well will tiktok get shut down hope not i mean i hope not that would be that would obviously be pretty damaging, but we're going to keep our eye on it. No fear in Yappy and be the G. Oh, Brandy. I can't, I can't imagine. Can't imagine. Yeah, the, the place that we moved into had a, a shelter already pre-existing there. I think it's a it's damn near a necessity in the Midwest now. Jen, Allison, Brave Mary. Thanks for the shares there. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, Wheaton, we, we do not have a basement. Just a shelter. Just a shelter. A, a lot of houses around here do have basements, but but even then, I mean, nothing's nothing's a hundred percent foolproof, right? <laughs> Pretty darn yarn says if someone says they don't like cats, I take that to mean they don't understand boundaries. I depends on the cat. If they had experiences in life with cats that were just demonically possessed, which I've been a witness to, maybe it's based on that. We had some cats growing up that were just like straight. I, I don't even know how to describe it, but well, we had a cat named Shadow when I was a kid, and this cat, this cat would hide, would hide and wait for you to walk by, and then like, whack, claws out, just just whack you, and the cat would also wait till toddler little children were walking by, and then would jump out and knock them down too, some cats are just evil, I'm sure some dogs are evil too, oh, Candy Thunder's punching in here. That's literally normal cat behavior. That's normal cat behavior? That's not demonic. Oh, yeah. well. Uh, my, Aria my doesn't do that. It's demonic. Your parents' Hallie? cat? Yeah. She's mean. She's getting older now, she too, really though, right? Navy. I think maybe yeah. a cat person. She was born a cat person. Born a cat person. Here, I'm going to... I'm flipping back here. What just happened there? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what just happened there. I tried to go to the booth cam, the uh, the BTS cam, and it, and it just told me no. So... Uh, I guess we aren't going to be doing that right now. Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you here today. Trini Marie, Lily Beast Treasures, Kiola Jenkins, a new member of the fam here. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate that. Kimberly P, Lily Beast Treasures, Aunt Sue, Cassie Harrelson, Brave Mary, MJ Newcomb, Kimberly P, Candy Thunder, Dylan Sprague, Michelle Heather, Rebecca Grimm, Overkill Mill, Kimberly P. You guys are awesome. Fane, I see you up there as well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're talking about dog or cat person today. That's our QOD general conversation. Coming up, we have stories about graduation decisions, romance novels, friendships ending, calling off weddings, inheritance dilemmas, homeless girlfriends, pesky parrots, and cake stories, and one wild ride of a spicy reward story. 
that's what's coming up here. First goal that we have is 3K bolts to get Candy Thunder up here. Always, always a lovely time. And uh, just a couple of other notes before we start diving in here. A huge, huge, huge thing. My cable would just not get out of my way. I kept It's like I was getting tangled up. Huge thank you to all of the mods and guests that we had for the 24 hour live and of course a huge thank you to everybody who watched along everybody who volunteered to mod even if you didn't get pulled into the fold there thankfully we didn't have to do that because it was it was pretty tame all day and the people that we did have modding to start off were on top of it so huge huge love to everybody who who took part in one way or another in the 24 hour stream if you don't know what i'm talking about the complete 24 hour recording is available on youtube to watch hopefully hopefully you had a chance to uh to watch that if you missed out on some part of it. It's still there if you didn't, though. Uh, a random note here. This doesn't have anything to do with the price of tea in China. But I'm going to be doing some gaming streams on Twitch over the next couple of weeks at random times. Just so we can check some boxes and be able to monetize on that side. So if you are a Twitch lover and happen to see that I'm live over there at a weird time, just be aware it's probably not normal storytelling content. It's just gaming content to check some boxes. But I'd still love to chat with you. Uh, if and when you catch me on there, so so be on the lookout. Uh, you can you can talk to me while I'm getting my butt kicked at Call of Duty. Also, Mission Protect the Cake is still going on. We're getting ready to deliver a lot of cake kits to organizations in the Joplin area, and we're going to be sharing some content. We're going to be taking photos and video when we go make those deliveries. So watch for some news on that. And thank you so much for supporting that mission. A quick reminder to keep chat positive and respectful. Everybody's allowed to have their own opinion, and we don't all have to agree. But it costs nothing to be a DFHB. Let's be respectful. And no spoilers, please. Of course. Of course. Be not afraid. Thanks for the share there. Natasha Dordy. Be not afraid. New Mom. Coral. Kill a Drink. Jenkins. TK. Carabites. Brandy Hicks Davis. Drea. Anita Hollis. Uh, thank you guys so much. Candy Thunder. See you there as well. Dropping them bolts. Kimberly P. Natasha. See you there too. Did you just thumbs up me? <laughs> you just, it's like the wax on dance. Hey, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, we're at 1562 at 3K. Let's dive in and record our first story. I am recording. Thank goodness. Uh oh, here she comes. She's punching in. It's funny that you mentioned waxing. It is funny that I mentioned waxing. That's all I have to say. That's it? <laughs> Set you up. Okay. So we're right before the stream. Right before the stream, I mean, like an hour and a half before the stream, uh, I had an appointment to get my eyebrows waxed because they were out of control. My brows were, were like growing together and growing into my hairline. It was just taking over everything. Uh, so so I had an appointment to get my brows waxed. And whenever I asked Candy Thunder to set that up for me, because that's that's, that's her place, uh, uh, she was jokingly said, you want to just go ahead and do everything? Not everything, everything. But... But she said, you want to go ahead and do like nose and ears, too. And I was like, screw it. Let's do it. So we did it. Uh, I got my the inside of my nose waxed. I got my ears waxed and did the uh, the brows all at the same time. And she filmed it. So we'll do something with that. You guys can all be witness to uh, to the the weirdness that that came out of my nostrils. It was it was wild. I also want to say that in the first 12 minutes of the stream, Candy Thunder asked asked for the microphone twice. That's like, I mean. Dare I say, by the end of the stream, we are going to have a habit formed. It's a good habit. When you want to, yeah, you're you're using the microphone. That's great. That may be dangerous. Yeah, we, we've got the clips. We haven't edited it together yet because it got back and then it was time to, to get ready for the stream. But but yeah, we've got uh, we've got some. We've got some content that'll be waxing content. It'll be coming at you soon. We'll see. All right. The first story that we have today comes from the Dusty Thunder subreddit and is titled, Will I be the astronaut if I don't go to my college graduation? I-31 male recently finished my master's degree and I never planned on attending the graduation ceremony. For context, I have two associates and a bachelor's and I've never gone to any of my graduations because it's not my thing. The only graduation of mine that I've ever attended was my high school graduation. Anyway, I was on FaceTime with my dad a few weeks ago when he saw the certificate on my fireplace mantle. When I told him what it was, it said, he said, why didn't you invite me to the graduation? 
Without thinking about it, I told him the graduation isn't until May, so he could still come if he wanted. Then I immediately backtracked and told him all the reasons why I really just don't care to go. He started begging me to go because this would be his only chance to see one of his kids walk the stage to get their masters. To be fair, he's not wrong. I'm number three of five kids, and to this point, none of my siblings even have an associate, so I fully understand what he's saying. I would probably be devastated if either of my kids didn't want to attend their graduation, too. My dad and I have a great relationship, and I don't think not going to my graduation would ruin that, but I also don't want him to have to keep flying out here for every milestone we have. We live on opposite sides of the country, and he's already flying out here this week for my younger daughter's first birthday. And again, if I get promoted this year, it will be announced in May. And again, for my graduation in May. I know I know, money wouldn't be much of an issue, but I genuinely, but I genuinely don't want him to visit for a day or two just so we can drive almost two hours away and back for my graduation. Also, I completely forgot to mention this to my dad, but the graduation is two days after my 11th anniversary, and my wife and I are trying to plan a week-long trip to celebrate. We haven't confirmed anything, so maybe that's why I forgot to mention it. I asked my wife what to do, since I really don't want to go, but also don't want to let my dad down, but she's just as lost as I am. And so, no one asks how my mom feels about it. She died when I was seven. Got it. Edited to add... Okay, this post is only a few hours old, but everyone here says NTA, but your comments kind of make me feel like the astronaut. I guess I kind of came here for a bit of understanding and getting other people's stories and perspectives, which is what I got. I appreciate you all for that. So I made my decision. I will be attending my graduation. I might hate it. The whole time I might be saying, I can't wait till this is over so I can go change clothes, but I'm going for one reason and one reason only for my pops. Thank you for all the insight, and I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday. Okay. Um, Walter, yeah, Opie's an adult. They don't have to go if they don't want to. And that's generally where I've been this whole time. Hey, Candice with an I. Thanks for the hands up. And Shirley with the disco love. Heck yeah, we are so close to hitting that 3K. We might even be able to get Candy Thunder up here to talk about this story. We'll see. Were you listening? <laughs> Doing research. She's on it. <laughs> She's on. Um, until the very end, whatever OP just went ahead and made his decision. My thought here was it. It. I understand not wanting, not caring about going because because the the ceremony is not the accomplishment, right? It is completing the journey that is the accomplishment. Now, now the ceremony is like the ceremony is celebration of completing that accomplishment i understand how op feels about it um it, it's nice to see that he's he's doing something that he that he doesn't want to do just for his father that's great if he chose not to do it i would hope that his father would be understanding and be like i'm proud of you for for the achievement walking the stage is not the achievement it is completing the journey so i i as a dad feel like i would be equally proud whether they walked the stage or not, it'd be great to have some pictures or something to be able to share. But you're also talking about putting OP through some pain with them doing something they feel uncomfortable doing and also having a lot of pain involved with making that flight and doing the travel. So is it worth the pain to be able to have a couple of pictures when the ceremony is just a ceremony? It's not the achievement. At least two degrees and never walked or had parties. Jocelyn, we had so we had the time change this past Sunday. So it is daylight savings for us. So we skipped ahead an hour. So I think people in our international areas here might be thinking we're earlier. It's the same time for us, but it, it might be different for you. Might be different, Jocelyn. Uh Candy CLKB says, for someone whose dad passed away, I would do it for my dad in a in a heartbeat. I, I get it. I get it. And and that's ultimately why OP ended up doing it. If OP had chosen not to go, I would still say NTA. And I feel like as a dad, I would be just as proud if they went or didn't go. So, so there's that. Um, but, but chose to go. So dad scored one here. Uh, and, and I hope dad understands how much effort OP is going through here just for him. I hope he understands that. Let's hope. Hey, Bearded Days on stream there. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. We did achieve a goal here. Let's talk about this for a second. We'll keep our QOD going up here as well. I will need a rescue on Beyond 15. Oh, you already got me. Look at that. Tony Spark is all over it here. 
all over it. We have Overkill Mill leading the board here for this goal. Kimberly P, Anise Moon, Elise Newman, Cali Peru, Candy Thunder, Carabites, and Haraxen. Sue Ann, 257, Nat Natasha Doherty, Fane, 13, Dylan Sprague, AK Mary, Matt Drummer, Christina Skillern, Cup of Tea Daily, Kansas Girl in a Texas World. I'm a Kansas girl in a Texas world. There's something there. Andre Hernandez, Miss Pamela L, Trini Marie, Justina, Cassie, Catnipped. Or Catnip indeed, Catnippened. Ashley Reed, Christy Museum Girl, Brandy Hicks Davis, Anita Hollis, Snall, S. Nall, Berlioz, Becky Morlock, BD Joe 2015, and Fulgent One. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. We'll get our next one set up and we'll get Candy Thunder up here to chat with you for a moment. This next one is going to unlock a Tony Spark appearance and a cake story. Tony and cake. Tony and cake. My caps lock was on, so it looks all weird. Whoop. Words are hard. Numbers are hard. Everything's difficult. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know her, you love her, the one and only Candy Thunder. Oh my God, it's Candy Thunder. Middle of the middle of the mat. Yes, sir. There you go. You need to get the tape. There you go. Uh, yeah. Well, the Hi, mat kind of is the mark. You know what I mean? Um, I just want to clarify that I would love to get a kitten because I think Navy and the kitten would have so much fun together. Um, but Dusty said no to the kitten. So, so that's where the puppies, because he doesn't want them to claw up the the couch. The everything. The everything. Yeah. I the, want the kitten, but it's a... I mean, look, <laughs> puppies, puppies scratch and chew things too, and we still have several reminders of those around our house. Yeah. It's funny because Navy Thunder will walk around now and wear, wear Luna when she was a puppy, like chewed or scratched things. She's like, oh... What happened? She's like, oh, doggy scratched it. Doggy <laughs> scratched it. I'm like, yeah, I get it. But, but I, you know, kittens destroy things. Yeah. We'd have to have, we'd have to have some designated boundaries there. But, um, but puppies are like newborn babies. Like I feel like cats are, cats are easier than puppies. Um, that's just my, when they're younger, not necessarily in general, but puppies are a lot more work in the beginning. It is really like a, yeah, they do have those things you can put on the edges of furniture to, so they can't claw them. Yeah. Yeah. Or how about, <laughs> how about some like some little, some little mittens a cat uh, can wear around? Luna will get on our bed. Like when we're not in it, she'll just jump up on our bed. Cause she's, she's huge. She's almost 90 pounds and she'll get in our bed and like play around. Cause she still acts like a puppy. And so she'll get in there and like toss the blankets and the pillows and like, like rub her face along the blanket and stuff. And it's just so cute. She's got to make it hundred percent hers. And she goes also like, like pony size. She really is. That's, I think why her and like our Navy wants to get along with Luna, but the size thing is, I feel like an issue because Luna is just, she doesn't understand her size. And she's like a toddler and she loves to play, loves to play. Um, she, Navy though. She loves Oliver, our little, yeah, a little puppy. Hey, thanks. Uh, these Alina. are just blue light glasses, but they were like five bucks. So at American Eagle, I saw them in the clearance bin and I was like, yeah. I like them too. My other ones were, I got blue light glasses from Amazon and they were so heavy on my nose that they were like, they gave me a headache. They were uncomfortable and these weigh absolutely nothing. All right. Numbers are. A chawoodle? Amanda, what's a chawoodle? Chihuahua poodle? That would be an interesting sight. What? A chawoodle. I have never seen this, but I am going to go Google Yeah, we got to go Google a chawoodle. <laughs> I feel like if we if we Google multi-poos, we're going to end up on the poop uh, Reddit. <laughs> Tony, Tony is putting on an auction um, for his church, for the school that's at his church, and uh, they have a puppy in the auction, and I'm like, I cannot, I a, cannot I look directly at it. Multi-doodle? A multi-doodle? A multi-poo. Multi-poo. Gotcha. Multi yeah, multi doodle. <laughs> All right, we got to Google the chewoodle. I'm going to look it up right now. <laughs> Rook says I had a shitty poo. It was a Shih Tzu and poodle. <laughs> a shitty poo? 
Oh right. my gosh. Bye guys. Yeah, they're they're auctioning off a puppy for uh yeah, they had it donated um for yeah, for litter. It's not like one yeah, yeah. For for St. Anne's. It's a, mul- a Maltese and a poodle. A Maltese and a poodle. Wow. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Candy Thunder. Let's give her some lightning bolt love up and chat here. Hopefully we can get her back up here in a little bit. Yeah, okay. So they've Googled the Chawoodle and she's in love now. She made the Alexis like face. Yeah. She's 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 a fan. Fifty nine to six fifty right now to get Tony Spark and a uh and a cake story rocking over here. Also, in be the G with the line bolts, Becky. Thanks so much for the donuts there. Becky and the gosh I can fam. Heck yeah. Rook, thanks for the love there as well. Uh Becky, Natasha, Elise, Candace with an I, Jill, Miss Pamela L, Tanya D, Aunt Sue. Thank you guys so much. Dave Turner, see you there, there as well. Michelle, Heather, you too. Chris and Justina, you guys are awesome. And thanks so much, Brandy. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate it. All right, let's rock and roll. Next story here is a follower submitted story. OP, if you happen to be in chat, you know what to say to claim your story. Uh, That is completely your call. Some people do like to do it. Some don't. Up to you. Title of this one is, Am I the Astronaut for Being Upset by My Wife's Books? Okay. So before we get into that. Am I the asking out for being upset as a feeling, right? You can't be an asshole for feeling something. It's what you do with that that can make you an asking out or not one. So let's see where it goes. Me and my wife have been together for quite some time. Recently, she has dove deep into reading romance books, which I never really knew much about. That is until one of her books went viral on TikTok and I was genuinely shocked and I was genuinely shocked at how vulgar and not safe for work those books can be. So I asked her about them and almost everyone is the same or worse. I hid my displeasure because it's not my place to tell her what she can or can't read, but I did try to read some of her books in order to understand. And my Lord, not all of them are so hardcore, but it shook me to my core. I realize they are just books and I'm not looking to control her. And for that reason, I have not said a word, but deep down, I do want her to stop. It has nothing to do with romance. It is just the spicy scenes are so graphic. It makes me uncomfortable. I do not want to ask her about stuff. I do. Words are hard. I do not want to ask her to stop reading them, but I don't know what to do. It's been weeks and I have been hurting because I can't just wrap my head around it. Small disclaimer. I am neurodivergent, more specifically ADHD, OCD and anxiety. I don't know if some of those things make me react to differently, differently to the content specifically, but it does cause me to obsess over things. I do not want to ask her because I know she would stop for me without a doubt, but I want her to be happy and have a good time. Any advice on how to proceed without being an astronaut would be appreciated. Okay. Um, let's talk about this for a minute. So the, the question is, am I the astronaut for being upset by my wife's books? Again, you, you can't be an asshole for feeling something, but you definitely could be for, for allowing that to drive you into the wrong kind of actions here. Right. Um, you, you're not the asshole for, or being bothered by that, right? I don't think you control what you do or do not feel. Um, processing that and figuring out what to do with it is is a completely different deal, though. But yeah, yeah, Lady Van Landingham for sure. The 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 fixation is what is definitely making it worse here. And I think understanding that you have something that is causing you to fixate that is really where where the focus should be now. Okay. I know I'm fixated on this thing. I know I easily fixate on things. How do I stop fixating on this thing? Find something else to fixate on. Okay. It is, you don't have an issue with her reading this, but reading it makes you uncomfortable. So don't read it. Uh, But just the fact that she's read, it makes you uncomfortable. I don't know. I feel like candy thunder. If you were reading spicy romance novels, I would have no problem with it at all. Right. So, so, uh, you, we swing the mic your way or, or pop back over here. I'm just interested in getting your take on this because uh, are you coming back over? She's coming back over. Ladies and gentlemen, we got her back over here. We got her back over here. Okay. Uh, yeah, if it bugs you, don't read it. But, but he said it doesn't, doesn't make her make him think that she's less of a person. It just bothers him that she, that she reads it. So what are your thoughts here? Um, I think that this is a him problem and I think for sure, sorry, you're trying to make me stand in the middle of the road, (laughs) putting a, putting a barrier behind her here. Um, Captain Morgan post. I I think that he, and 
I was thinking the same thing. I, but I feel like I can't say that out loud. No, I was wondering if this, if reading stuff in the books is something that they, you know, their husband and wife, they're having sex. That's totally normal, fine. I know, right? Oh my gosh. Shock. Um, so I think maybe he's feeling like he can't live up to the romance novels. And so maybe it makes him feel a little bit inadequate, which it's a book. Like it's fiction. Like these, this is not real life. And if she's not putting like that pressure on you to, you know, cause sometimes people can read a book and think that that's real life. Um, and, and expect that to happen. Like expect your life to unfold like a romance novel. Um, and that's not real life. But if she's not putting that pressure on him to, to achieve these unachievable goals, then let your wife read her smut and who cares? <laughs> Uh, to, to Anne's point, like imagine how, how he could benefit from this. He, I, I'm thinking the same thing, but then also my man says up here, that's the username, not me saying, <laughs> um, says this gives me the whole, if you have a dream about somebody else, that's still cheating kind of vibe. Uh, maybe, maybe, but I, I, I think, I think OP has acknowledged here that it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't make them uncomfortable or make them think any less of their partner. It just, right reading that kind of stuff makes them personally uncomfortable, which is an easy fix. I don't read it. Right. But, but it's the fixation. The fixation is, yeah. is where this is a problem in here. And to your point, candy thunder, there are, I I've heard of a lot of people, even, even people that, that have been, you know, connected to my personal life in the past who, who got lost in books to the point where they couldn't like their spouses got lost in books and, and yes. kind of absorbed that they should be real life. And that, completely I, gave them an unachievable benchmark for real life and, yeah. and it destroyed their relationship. So I, um, to your point, that is a real possibility. If that doesn't yeah. happen though, like what is the harm going on here? I mean, if, if your wife isn't, like I said, isn't giving you that, those expectations that you're supposed to live up to this, whatever's happening in her book, then I think, I think you might be, it, it's definitely a you problem. You're reading too much into it. It's probably just something that, that she likes reading or being mm. say, stimulated in that way. And I mean, stimulated, like reading it, not, not in a, that kind of way. And maybe she should, I don't know. And it doesn't matter the, it, that, that part of it, like doesn't, I don't think that matters. Maybe ask your wife why she reads them, what she gets out of it. Um, and maybe then you can understand I, it better. I, 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 I mean, he has to know or he's not like he said, he's OCD. He's neurodivergent, neurodivergent. He's going to, he's going to fixate on this. He's going to want to know the wise. And if she, unless he finds something to swap for that fixation. But I think if, if yeah. they dive deeper into the conversation at this point, I, I think the service level understanding that he has right now is that he doesn't have a problem with it. He's just fixated on it. So right. swap it and fixate on something else so that you can move on. If, if they stick with this and continue in the conversation and he asks why, I feel like he's going to start fixating on that now instead. And that's just going to, it's going to be a rabbit hole that he can't escape and it's going to end up causing them actual problems. I think whenever I was younger, the Twilight series was something that captivated me in that love story and my life wasn't like that. Like it was real life. And so it made me feel. Is that why you keep putting glitter on my face? <laughs> yeah, all the time. But that's why, like, I wanted that love. Really like, I wanted to feel that, and I didn't feel that, and so I thought that something was wrong. And I think that goes hand in hand with, um, like, living in your own reality and not. But it, it doesn't seem like his wife has that issue, like where she no. is projecting this onto her real life. I think she just reads them because she enjoys reading them. It is interesting that Op says that he has no doubt. He Vampires she, don't sparkle. They Op has no doubt that that their partner would stop reading them for OP. Which, right. I mean, so it sounds like they have a healthy relationship and this is just something that he didn't know she was doing. And so it's a shock to him, right. but I don't, I don't think that he's wrong in feeling the way that he does about it. I just, I, it's a him problem and I would not project that onto your wife. Yeah. That yeah. I wouldn't make your problem, your wife's problem because she doesn't have a problem up to this point. Yeah. Well, and, and uh, dissecting the title even differently here, am I the asking not for being upset by my wife? my wife's books him reading those books made him upset yeah so upset. It, it is yeah it's not it's not her reading them that's making him upset yeah how is tj says my question would be how is that any different from tv shows like great gray's anatomy and gray's anatomy is full of that full right. of it um and my mom's like my mom worked in 
in ORs, and she's like, "It is. this is not real life. This is not how it works at hospitals. And Pink Cloud, to your point, uh, as a neurodivergent, says, I can tell you he will need to go talk to her. You can't choose what you focus on, uh, what you fixate on. Man, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I, I would think that there has to be a way to swap, like to, to intentionally fixate on something new, um, if for no other reason than to keep him busy and give give the back of his mind time to, See, and to process and accept dustin and i even last night like we we bickered because we differ on that i like to talk things through till i have no breath left which as you know doesn't take very long but um i have to talk 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 and he does not want to talk he wants to internalize and focus on solutions and not talk until i need time he's comfortable to process so it's it's funny that that was brought up. Yeah, cause. I need time to process, and if I don't have time to process, the communication is very messy, and we just we will end up in an argument. Um, and she needs to talk, so finding some kind of balance there <laughs> is difficult. Like it's that's a difference, but I don't think I don't think differences are incompatibilities. It is just there's a way there's just there's a compromise in there somewhere. In this case, nah. it is <laughs> in this case, it is something that OP understands is a them problem. They just mm -hmm. have to figure out how to process that and how to accept that and okay. not force their their issues with this literature onto someone else. Also, I don't think there's anything wrong with reading these books. That's just my personal yeah, that's I don't have time choice. to read right now, but that's a personal choice. I don't have any problem. With hey, we read several books per day. They're just all about 20 pages long and toddler themed. So that's true. Again, again, read a book. again. Okay. I gotta go pick right. up Ava. Bye guys. Love you, Tater. She'll be back here in a bit. She'll be back here in a bit. It's not, I mean, it's as solid as I feel like we are, you know, those communication st styles can still be a complication. Like in last night it was, it was, you know, um, if I don't have time to think into process and I, and whenever I take in something stressful, I need to get away and let my mind fixate on something else. So in the back of my mind, I can be working that problem. I'm not going to find a solution by sitting there talking it through right then. Uh, and that's just one of the areas where we vary, but I think it's, you, you find a way to work through it somehow, somehow, uh, 151 of 650 right now on our donut goal here to get Tony Spark and a cake story up here. Kel Jaworski sending some donuts through right now. Callie, Shaz, Donna J, D, Donna DJ. Why do I sometimes want to put the J first? I don't know. Alejandra, Christine, Fresh Grace, Carol again there, Tanya D, Luna Lynx, Mama Jen, Christina Boudrien, Jill, Anise Moon, Lisa Martin, Ash Tay, Lisa Michelle Heather. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. Also, so all a first time gifter up here somewhere. KTH93 and One Chalkman. Thank you guys so much. LC, Christine Glazer, Christina. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate the love. Uh, Amanda, thanks for the share there. JJ, thanks for the share. Alexandra, thanks for the share there as well. What did I screw up? No, Tony wants to give feedback on the next story. Okay, gotcha. To Tony Spark really wants to give feedback on the next story, but we can only do that if we hit the donut goal. So uh, I'll read real slow until we're pacing right, and then and then we'll we'll knock it through. There we go. Oh, we just got an update for that. Sweet. Awesome. Alexandra, Bree, Amberly, Marva, uh, uh, Akizanara, Autumn. Thank you guys so much for the love. Greatly appreciate the shares there. Uh, stop enabling your symptom, symptoms. You or your partners that have these issues. Lily, um, speaking as a neurodivergent herself. There's got to be some level of choice involved at some point. And I understand that's that takes time to like learn Um to learn how to impose those kind of things on yourself. But I feel like that's life, right? Life is, is about learning yourself and learning how you best perform and how to control certain things about yourself. And Haraksen, Bree, you guys are awesome. Thanks for the shares. Greatly appreciate it. Diving into the next story here. This one is from the Dusty Thunder subreddit as well. We are now at 250 of 650 on the donuts. We're moving. We're moving along here. The people want to hear what Tony Spark has to say. They do. I got to get my, my Baptist preacher. Ah, added to end, the end of all the words there. You know, they want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. All right, here we go. This is from the Dusty Thunder subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for telling off my best friends after they skipped my graduation party? Right, row. Candace with an I, KTH93, Diana Costa. Thank you guys so much. Uh, 
Frusha Candles. Thank you, guys. Samantha Kramer, Amanda, Jill, Melissa B, EO. You guys are great. Thank you. 300 now. We're moving. This happened almost 10 years ago, but I still think about it from time to time. I, 23 at the time, female, had been friends with male, 24 at the time, female since sixth grade, and in. I'm sorry. I, 23 at the time, female, had been friends with M, 24 at the time, female, since sixth grade, and N, 25 at the time, female, all through high school. There's lots of letters there that were making that a little confusing for me. I got it now. I got it. I got it. We have, we have OP, we have M, and we have N, two female friends. I finally managed to squeeze four years of college into six and wanted to celebrate with a big graduation blowout. My parents volunteered to host since it was summer in Texas and they have a pool. I bought the booze, made the food, and decorated my parents' house and patio in anticipation of good times. The party was revolving door style, people coming and going as they needed to, since the party started at 5 p.m. and wouldn't wind down until I was tired, probably around midnight. M and N told me they were at a supernatural convention for the day, but they'd be at the party later that night. Side note, I wasn't invited to go with them, even though we all watched the show because I had already sent out invites to my party when they bought their tickets. They texted me pictures from the convention throughout the day, and I was feeling more and more upset that I wasn't included in those plans. Around 9 p.m., they still hadn't shown up. I texted our group chat asking what time they'd be over. I didn't receive a text back until almost 10 p.m. M texted that they were super wiped from the convention, but they were still planning on coming by. My coworkers, really more friends than coworkers, had been there since 8 p.m. and we'd been doing celebration shots together. So I was more than a little tipsy. By 11 p.m., M and N still hadn't shown up and I was pissed and a bit drunk. I sent a text in the group chat telling them that they were total bitches for bailing on me for a freaking convention that they didn't even invite me to and that what they did was super shitty. Supernaturally shitty. They cut all contact with me that night, and I spent the next three years feeling uber guilty about it. After finally talking to a therapist, I tried to reconnect with M and N to apologize for the text. Needless to say, it did not go well. Long story short, N essentially told me to F off and leave her alone, and M and I had a meetup that ended in disaster. I didn't think I was totally justified in sending that, that text to the group chat that night, but I still have had needling doubt telling me I shouldn't have said it. So was I the astronaut? Edit, I'm not looking to salvage the friendship. I made my peace with the loss about five years ago. It's just something that pops into my brain from time to time, and I'm genuinely curious. Before we dive over to an update here, Angel sending out gifted subs. Heck yeah. We have new members of the fam here. Jamie, Nana of 12, Barb, Alley Cat, NY, and Kitty Cat. Welcome to the Gosh Hecked fam, courtesy of Angel. Angel, you're awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, Amberly, not me literally wearing a supernatural shirt. There you go. Update. This will probably be my one update to my post. So I'll try to address everything. I'm not looking to salvage these friendships. This happened years ago and I've made my peace with it. I was just genuinely curious because it's one of those things that pops into my head from time to time. We had talked about going to the convention together when the dates and cities were announced. Our city was less than an hour from where we all lived and we were excited. However, the tickets were too expensive. In originally had to work that day, and we decided as a group not to go. They bought their tickets about two weeks before the convention because N managed to get the day off. I was not included in that discussion. They told me after the fact. I didn't have the money to go because I had been getting stuff for my graduation party, but sending them pictures throughout but them sending pictures throughout the day felt like a slap in the face to me. And I'll admit I was more than a little bit jealous. My therapist at the time had told me it couldn't hurt to reach out to them for the sake of closure. When I reached out to N and M, I apologized for the things I said and explained why I felt the way that I did. No, it didn't excuse the angry text, and I said that. N told me to F off. M and I decided to meet up. It was awkward. We were both uncomfortable, and we now lived three hours away from each other. I didn't go into details because it was a separate thing. Generally speaking, our parties ended at midnight or so. Yes, it's early for a lot of college kids, but we also had retail jobs that had us clocking in at 9 a.m., even on weekends. The convention was a day-long thing. I think it was at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or something like that. M and N said they would come by after the convention. Again, the city was less than an hour away, even in rush hour traffic. I have a full-time job, and I posted this right before my day started. I just didn't have the opportunity to be on Reddit while I'm on the clock, even during my lunch hour. This is the first opportunity I've had to read through everybody's comments. Okay, 
so uh, we did learn some new information in that. Uh, 393 is 650. If we get a big infusion of donuts right now, we can get Tony Spark up here. You probably do it anyway. Okay. Uh, this is, Callie says it's a, it's an ESH, which may be, which, which uh, I, I don't know. Is OP the, the asshole here? Because, because these friends excluded her from the conversation where they were talking about going to where they made the, the last minute decision, last minute being two weeks out to go to this, to the, the supernatural convention anyway. And didn't talk to her about it. Maybe they just assumed that uh, that she'd be broke because they knew that she was acquiring stuff for her graduation party. But they knew probably if they were close enough friends, they knew when that graduation party was going to be. They just chose this instead of her and chose to exclude her. It does, as chat is saying here right now, it does very much feel like they were just looking for an opportunity to to essentially remove OP from their friend group. They made the decision to do something like this without her, a show that that the three of them watched together, didn't communicate to her about it. And because of that, ended up not going to her graduation party. I don't know that they maliciously sent pictures throughout the event. I feel like that was them probably feeling guilty and trying to include her in some way. I feel like it backfired because it came across as a slap in the face. Uh, but but it seems like they very much didn't want her there. And them saying they were still going to try to come to the to her graduation party was probably fueled by guilt and nothing more. Uh, I, I think that's why the pictures probably happened as well. I don't think they meant it to be malicious because if they did, then they wouldn't be saying, yeah, we're still going to try to come to your party. Now, at the end of the night, I'm sure they were wiped from that convention um, and made the decision not to go. That decision was made, what, two hours after the convention ended? No, four hours after the convention ended. But, uh, okay, con lovers. At the end of a convention, is there like an after party? Do a lot of people who who go to the cons like go hang out somewhere or does it like hard end at seven and everybody goes home? How does that work? Always con after parties. That's what I'm thinking. So I, I mean, that may be that may be when the center closes, but I don't think that's when that's when everything is done. Sometimes there are after parties depends on the cons. Some do, some don't. Is Tony Spark going to come up here? Hey, yeah. We can't keep him away, ladies and gentlemen. He's got some thoughts he wants to share with us. Let's bring him up. Uh, Angel says, you skip the after party and show up for your friend. Yes. But they just decided this day or two weeks prior when they whenever they made the decision about the tickets that she wasn't their friend anymore. But Tony Spark has some thoughts. I feel like you might have some experience in a, in a similar, similar veined kind of thing here. Let's bring him up. Let him talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Spark. Hi, Tony Spark. Hi, everybody. And while he's up here, just keep your mind on our on our. Yeah, on hey, our we're donuts. almost we there. We could hit it. We could hit it. We're almost we there. Uh, yeah, I have some thoughts. Um, first off, the the whole after party thing. Like, I get it that that's that may be part of the experience, but you should know if you are going to this convention on that day that you have an after party and it's your friend's party. Like, that's where you're supposed to be. And I feel like you said they made the decision when they got the tickets that they weren't her friends. And I, I think that's true. Um, I think the fact I think it'd be a different story if OP had never been a part of the discussions about going to this initially. And the fact that she was they decided as a group not to go, even if it came out last minute, there should have been some kind of she should have been in that conversation of saying, hey, I know your party's that day. I know you probably can't go to it. We're going to go to it, but we'll be at your party. And the bottom line is, if they're if they're really your friends, they would show up for you because that's what friends do. Friends show up to things that are important for you, and you shouldn't have to beg them to do that. And the fact that they did this, it's I mean, it's really I understand if you want to go, if you want to go to the convention, go. It sounds like you had plenty of time to go to the convention, get done in plenty of time, make your way to the party. Yeah, you're going to be tired, but you know what? Hey, that's your friend and you're going to be there supporting your friend, whether you're tired or not. I mean, I think that's. I, I think it's pretty shitty. And and I understand that being like you, you mentioned sending the photos as a way to include them. But I would think the same thing. Like I would not take it as a way of feeling included. I'd be like, well, I didn't even get invited to go to this thing. They're sending me pictures to it. Wow. It looks like they're having a great time. They keep telling me all day that they're going to the party. Like and then they don't show up like that's pretty shitty because you're leading her on all day long. 
and you're at this party and yeah, if these are really some of your closest friends and they don't show up, I mean that you're going to feel like shit. Like it's, it's yeah, that's stuff. Oh, my watch is buzzing spam. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just think that, you know, if they're your friends, they'll, they'll show up for you. And I think that they made the statement that they, and the fact, and also, okay, that's not even the other part about the drunk text. I mean, how bad was this text that they uh, cut contact with you? I mean, which one of us, like who out there hasn't gotten mad at their friends, been drunk or been whatever and got mad and sent off a message that they may like, they're like, man, they wake up the next day and shouldn't have said that and apologize for it. And if your friends just say, oh, whatever, I'm done. Like how good of friends were you to begin with? If they can't even, you can't even get past that and then have a conversation about why she was that upset and sent that message to begin with. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, I mean, if they're your friends, like everybody fights with their friends. Everybody has disagreements with them. And you can't just say like, oh, I'm done with you because you were mean to me last night. Like, come on. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. And this is something very important to OP and you didn't show up. So. Real friends bicker. Right? Yeah, that's I mean, right. It happens. It, it just happens. Yeah. We hit the goal. We hit the anyway, goal. Hit the goal. Hey, I'll look at you all. Those go. are my thoughts. Look at you Bye. all go. I, I was going to ask if you wanted to get into your, your personal experience here, but maybe that's a different story. It's a story for a different time, perhaps, here. Let's give some thanks for our donut donators here. Donut donors or donutters? That doesn't sound right. United Snorts of America leading the board here, followed closely behind by a two-way tie. For the number two spot here, Michelle Heather and Elise Newman. Heck yeah. House of Snorts, Jess Smudge, Anise Moon, I Am Jill 21, Callie Brew, Valerie Shadowcat, Candy Thunder, and Haraxin Berlioz, uh, MX Banners, Trisha G, Natasha Doherty. Tony's got the save here for numbers 15 and beyond. Hey, Ellen, Sergeant Mac, good to see you guys. Good to see you here. Ellen, thanks so much. I, yeah, I, I think it's been a long, long time since I've worn a button-up that wasn't a flannel. Yeah, it's got little flamingos and, and gin and tonics on it. A little flamingo with a little drinky drink on it. <laughs> Andrea Jord Andrea Jordan. Andrea Jordan Tread. Amina 898, Overkill Mill, Sue Ann 257, Tanya D, aka T. Snowman Collector, Tony Spark, Kimberly P, Janet Lopez, Becky Murby. Christine for JP, Miss Pamela L, and Ann Bracker, Mama Jen, 6666, Lady Legions, Queen B, KTH93, Mad Drummer, Annie Butcher, Trini Marie, Refried Rena Bean, Justina, Sharon Day Newton, Dylan Sprague, Kelly McMillan, AK Mary, Andrea Hernandez, Fruzja, is it Fruzja Candles? Am I saying that right? F U F R U Z S C A, Fruzja. Fruja Candles, Diana Costa, Salty Girly, Juan Chalkman, and Alexandra. Alexandra DeCroix. DeCroix? DeCroix? Why are names hard? Why are, why are names so hard? Why are words hard? DeCroix. Natasha, uh, you'll have to tell me phonetically. Phonetically, how to say it. Lexi! You finally catching up? Uh, well, first live catching since the 24 hour life? Fully recovered yet? I'd like to say yes. I'd like to say yes. There's probably still some lingering effects. Uh, more by. Got it. Becky, more by? Fruzia candles. Heck yeah, there you go. I need my glasses today so I can be cool like Candy and Tony Spark. On it, Elise. On it. Or the glasses crew today. There we go. Hey, thanks for thanks for tagging out Tony Spark. <laughs> there you go. Am I cool now? follow out Tony. Am I cool? It is a it is a nice, lovely day. A little bit windy. We had some severe weather last night, but it is a nice, nice day. It's very, very cool. Lisa, baby cakes. Thanks for the the follows and the shares. They're greatly appreciated. House of Violations. Also, United Snorts of America. There you are. There you are. <laughs> Blue light glasses. That's where I'm at too. And really. It, it, I typically only wear them on days when I know I'm going to be staring at the screen for like a long, long, long time or I already have a headache, but it makes a big difference. It really does. It really, really does. Makes a big difference. All right, I'm going to get the new goal set up here. Sorry, I'm dragging my feet on it. I get distracted easily. Squirrel. Squirrel. Okay, this is going to unlock a spicy reward story, which is a crazy story, apparently. Haven't read it yet, but they tell me the story is Bonkers, spicy, crazy reward story. Boom. All right, here we go. 
We are going for 2.5K Tiny Dinies. Let me pin that goal real quick. Pinned. Got it. Pins. And we are at 30% of our live goal right now. The likes goal, sorry. We have a goal of 500K likes. We're at 150K right now. Hey yo, hey yo, Erica. Okay. The, do we get the new Bluey in April? I'm not sure. I'll have to check. What is like season four? Or season 3.5? I'm not sure. 60 degrees. What is it? How It is 79 here right now. That's what it nice. says. It's it's very nice. It's very nice. And nice enough for me to wear a, a short sleeve button up shirt, which, which hasn't happened in ages. Okay, we're diving to the next story here. I think the determination. Oh, we got to make an official determination here. Um, AITA for telling off my best friends after they skipped my graduation party. I'm going in TA. I don't think it's an everyone sucks here because because OP was was wronged and feels some guilt probably because they took this action and they feel like this action is what ended the relationship that that she had with her friends. That's not the action that ended the relationship. The action that ended the relationship was when they bought the tickets and excluded you from that conversation, OP. You did not destroy this relationship. They did. And personally, I think, you know, you wanting to revisit that conversation with them years down the road probably just gives them more power. And then they're like, oh, we succeeded in making her think it was her that destroyed this, which is garbage. It's garbage. Trisha G, Candace with an I, A, Natasha Doherty. Is it Doherty? Yes. Okay. <laughs> House of Violation. Can't believe it's already so muggy here in Houston. My hair frizzed out in 0. 0.5 seconds. You know what? Uh, I, I feel your pain because on on very humid days, my beard will poof out. It just goes poof. It's crazy. Mary Fogel, the Fulgent One, Mallory Rocks, MJ Newcomb, Kitty Hall, Kelly McMillan. You guys are awesome. Jackie or Kelly, thank you so much. Dana, see you there as well. Mary, Dr. Sweets is in the house. Trisha G, Vero, and Dan, you guys are great. Thank you all so much. Greatly appreciated. Do Herte. <laughs> Do Herte. Do Herte. Got it. I'll work on it. We'll work on it. Okay. Dive into the next story here. This one is from the AITA subreddit. What's that? I'm doing a cake story now. Oh, because we unlocked it. You're right. Thanks. Mr. Producer, director, sir, uh, is pointing me in the right direction. We have a cake reward story to read that I almost forgot about. This is from the AITAH subreddit and is titled, Will I be the astronaut if I canceled our wedding cake? So to start, I run a doggy daycare. One of our pups belongs to another local business owner, and I had thought we had a positive relationship. Her dog was fantastic at our facility. She always paid on time, was always communicative, communicative, <laughs> was always communicative and was very pleasant with all of my staff. We accept payment through cash, debit, credit, and e-transfer to our business account in correlation to invoices. The owner pays an e-transfer, has her invoices up to date, and she always pays early if not on time. Of course, some owners aren't nearly as reliable. Lately, we put it out there that we are no longer accepting e-transfers for our daycare services. She took this as directed to her, settled up her invoice, and said she didn't want to take her dog here anymore. In said post to our page, I never mentioned names, never tagged anyone, etc. Simply mentioned that SS of next week, or simply mentioned that as of next week, we aren't taking any e-transfers anymore. Turns out she is making our wedding cake, something I found out by accident. We bought a little package deal that includes virtually everything, save for the dress and suits. In the amount of anger directed at us in the Facebook message, it is very difficult for me to trust that she won't be petty in other circles. Out of curiosity, I looked her business up, and there are a significant amount of bad reviews due to the owner being quite defensive and abrasive with customers who had genuine concerns. Well, shit. Solution path I had in mind is out the window then. The vendor we bought the package from has other bakers for cakes. The owner doesn't know that I know it's her. The owner was not the one who sold us the package. That person is very nice and one of the kindest individuals we've ever had the opportunity to meet. Will I be the astronaut if I cancel the wedding cake from this specific vendor? I don't want any other drama or implications to come of this. Ah, what I was going to say in the beginning was... This seems like something that communication could handle, right? This seems like something where you need to have a conversation with this person, even, 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 notwithstanding the whole cake thing, I'm viewing as a separate thing here. 
If you have a very good customer that misunderstands something, feels like it was directed at them and abruptly cancels services with you, talk to them and be like, hey, uh, you've been a great customer. We've had a great relationship over the years. It feels like you might be uh, offended right now or it feels like we might have done something to offend you. We want to make sure that we that we have a conversation and, and remove any kind of misunderstanding here. That's issue one here. And I feel like as a as a, a business owner, I feel like that's something that you just have to suck it up and do sometimes. It sucks, but it is something that you just have to suck it up and do sometimes. So I, I feel like you did misstep here by just letting it happen and being like, oh, well, I guess they're gone now. Talk about it uh, and try to reestablish that connection. Now the separate issue, the separate issue of, of this, this customer of yours turns out they, they run a cake shop and have a lot of bad reviews. That's a problem just in and of itself, because now you have a lot of risk involved with your wedding cake, which is not the kind of thing that you want risk involved with at all, right? There's already enough risk with all the other 87 plates that are spinning and moving parts of a wedding day. If you know there's significant risk involved with a wedding cake, yeah, I think you're not an astronaut at all for changing that for a very separate reason, though. I don't think it has anything to do with what's going on with your business. I do think having a conversation with this 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 person slash former customer slash hopefully a future customer again because they were a solid low maintenance customer for you is a damn good idea um but i do not think accepting risk a high level of risk when it comes to your wedding cake is a smart idea lynette says you canceling your order also shows them that you know who they are i i i understand i understand um however I think this is that part of it is a conversation I would have with the person who facilitated the package. And then the question becomes, hey, look, um, we we noticed that one of your vendors here has a lot of bad reviews on the cake side thing. We've got some concerns. Do they know that an order has been placed already? Have you alerted them at this point or is that something that you do later on? If it's not something they do till later on, I think you've got you you've got an advantage there, right? You've got an advantage to be able to make that pivot without, without them finding out that, that it was you. But, but I do feel like they're two separate issues because it's not the, it's not the awkward dealing that you had with, with your business that, that gives me the heebie jeebies about this one. It's all the negative reviews and this is a wedding cake. It's too risky. It's too risky. I would talk to the customer to try to reestablish them as a, a customer of your business. But I would also have a conversation with whoever facilitated the packages and, and issue your concerns to them and be like, Hey, like, does this person already know that this order is in regardless of if they know that it's us or not, do they already know that there's an order? How painless is it to switch that around? Have you heard other people express concerns about this vendor here? If you know that there's risk involved with this vendor, why is this vendor part of this package? That kind of conversation, I feel like is a two separate thing here. We had time change this week. We we jumped ahead because it's daylight savings time for us. So so for a lot of you, let me knock out the little TikTok puzzle thing real quick to let them know that we are still live, we're still we're still active here. Um, ooh, nepotism maybe has violations. That's possible. So if it's the wedding planner person or whoever that package was was done through, I, you may have to do a little bit of homework before opening up that can of worms too. No matter what NDA. It's your, it's your wedding. You're allowed to make whatever changes you want. And, and avoiding risk when it comes to your wedding is probably generally a good idea. Uh, Dr. Sweets, I think not having a conversation with her and canceling only reinforces thoughts that it's personal. 100%. I think if you don't have a conversation with this person as a customer of your business, and then you cancel the order, it definitely, if they know that it's you, it just solidifies the fact that there's a problem. When there maybe isn't a problem at all. At least when it comes to your business, if they're not going to get your order either way, that's that's a separate issue. I think having the conversation, at least I don't think there's really a problem there. I think there's a misunderstanding. Misunderstandings just require communication. But who knows? Who knows? RJ McHale says, look, everyone needs to read or listen to Piano Man. It was great. Thank you so much. Greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate that. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, Rook, if they uh, check Discord, it shows the stream times. That, that is a damn good idea. Also, if you subscribe to the SMS notifications, you can get text right before I go live too. So, um, so there. So there. 
Make sure you can get a cake from someone else be- first before canceling. <laughs> That's true. Um, but again, man, I feel like at this point, if there's significant risk involved with something being wrong with your cake, is it better to just have to find a new avenue for cake? I think so. I think so. Uh, Tiful and kind, and a Amina M with the tiny dinies coming through. Thanks so much for that. 1126 to 2500 on that already. Roxanne Condon with the auto renewal for the gosh heck and fam. Heck yeah. Um, Exacular. RJ McHale, Heather McMahon, Heather McCammon, Raya, Raya or Ray? Heather McCammon, Ray with the tiny dinies as well. There, well, there, words are just really. Just between here and here, it's just something is happening where the words just aren't coming out right. Kimberly P. Dr. Sweet with the tiny dinies there as well. Lady Legends, Sarah, Sarah Hope, Scoggins, Solrati, Vero, and Dan fly on the wall. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. Uh, Kia Gillum, you just got the notification about this live. Hello. Hello, everyone. No one did a cake testing. I don't know how far away their wedding is. We did it back. Did we talk about that? I don't think it does. Yeah, I don't know how how early in this process they are. My hope is that they're very early, like the baker doesn't even have the notification that this part of the package has been purchased or needs to be addressed yet. And if that's the case, they have a lot more freedom to be able to change things around. But in general, this is an NTA. If it, I mean, if if for only the increased risk of having all of these negative reviews from people who have had complications and how people are treated whenever they bring up concerns, yeah, it's concerning. And generally, I feel like a negative review is an opportunity, if nothing else, for a business to to show other people how they handle difficult situations. Right. I'd say unless it's just a crazy out there outlandish review, uh, my general theory is leave it, respond to it in a way that that either seeks to that seeks a solution or at least paves a path to a solution here, whether or not they take that that offer is up to them, but at least shows other people that you're willing to to work with people when it's a difficult situations. Angel says, I would only mention the reviews issue part to the package seller. Agreed. Agreed. Ms. Muffin, four months in. Jenny says there was an update to the AITA for limited dinner, dinner party. Ah, uh, we'll make sure Tony Spark and Caden Thunder and Candy Thunder are aware there. It's good to see everybody here. Uh, Erica, good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Elizabeth, Cassie, Liz, Alejandra, Christina, Brandy, Hicks, Davis, Aaron Biederman, Abigail, Funk, V Baby Jewels. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. We're getting there. 1151 and 25 hundo. And this unlocks the crazy spicy reward story. So hopefully we'll get a chance to read it here. In the meantime, we'll bounce to our next story here. Oh. Oh. Get back to my... Original scene. It's a damn good fan, Ms. Muffin. You're right. Rook, you missed 24 hour live. Your son had the flu. The flu has been going around. It's been going around a lot. Uh, we we battled it over the over the weekend as well, over the past week, really. Uh, but if you missed 24 hour live, you can still catch it on YouTube. It's all there. You can watch every <laughs> every excruciatingly painful and fun moment. It was a damn good time. Uh, somebody asked about the Funko Pops here. We're going to go through and show these real quick. Y'all y'all have seen this one by now, right? The Dusty Thunder. We have a Candy Thunder holding a Diet Coke and a phone with a puppy, of course. And then we've got Moira from The Crows Have Eyes 3. The Crow winning. We have Moira again. And the latest edition, which I haven't shown you yet. That was a gift from Candy Thunder for my birthday, which just showed up like last week as Moira from the wedding. She even has a mascara tear. It's fantastic. Really is fantastic. My shelves are going to be full here soon. Uh, Danny says, maybe it's just me. I don't know if I want a customer that is going to go that over the rails. The flip side of it is, though, that they had like a, a really solid low or no maintenance customer that paid on time. And then just all of a sudden didn't. And as a business, I'd be like, man, I, I want to smooth that over. Mary, better member of the Storm fan for 344 days. Holy cow, that's awesome. 
That is awesome. We yeah we got to make a Tony Spark now. Yeah, I know we ha- and we have to we have to make a Caden one and a Tony Spark one. We got We got to make a lot of people here. Got to make them. Mine's Bree, thanks for the, the share. Mine's the Jason Kelsey one. You're just gonna be the sh- the Jason yeah. Kelsey one, the shirtless the Jason, Jason Kelsey, Kelsey one. one from the Bills game. That's that's the one I get. Uh, Moira is is a character from Schitt's Creek. It's played by Catherine O'Hara, and it's a voice that I do quite a bit. She's just she's an amazing actress. Amaze balls. Okay, our next story here comes from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for calling off the wedding after my fiance joked he was trapped in this marriage? My fiance proposed three months ago. It was a beautiful, intimate proposal, and I loved the idea of telling our future kids about his proposal. I was really excited to plan my wedding. I work in the events industry, and this sort of thing is my passion. My fiance has ADHD and finds planning very boring. His default response is, whatever you want. So I've had full creative pre freedom. It's not even what that word says. So I've had full creative freedom, but I am a little sad he didn't contribute to anything, even the color scheme. My fiance and our friends were talking about the wedding. I was telling them some of my plans to cut costs down, and my friend made a joke that it was a good thing my fiance locked me down because I'm a professional. My fiance joked that he didn't lock me down. I locked him up. He said he was trying to enjoy his last days of freedom before I trapped him in the marriage. And generally not a good thing to say to your fiance. I felt really upset that he didn't acknowledge my hard work in planning the wedding and because he joked that I was trapping him into a marriage and that pushed and that I pushed him into getting married. I decided we should call off the wedding for now. He wasn't interested in getting married and I don't want to marry someone who doesn't enthusiastically want to get married. I talked to my fiance and said that I'm going to call off the wedding plans and we could reevaluate if he really wants to get married or even stay in this relationship. We haven't sent out our RSVPs or booked too many vendors yet, so I want to call it off before it becomes an even more expensive mistake. He was very upset that I called off the wedding and said he was just joking. He said it's normal to joke about this. Am I the astronaut? Edit. I've talked with him about his lack of enthusiasm. Uh, wait, what? I've talked with him about his lack of enthusiasm about anything. I don't even need him to have initiative, but an opinion would be nice. He said he doesn't care about the details at all. I let it go after I felt like I was nagging him to have an opinion or to have an opinion on something. The joke made me realize that he probably doesn't want to get married. That's where his lack of enthusiasm comes from. We are pretty early into wedding planning and I want to call it off because weddings are expensive and I'm not sinking more of my money into uncertainty. Figuring out whether he wants to get married will take time and time is money. I can work with him on figuring that out, but I can't keep a wedding timeline with that. Okay. Okay. I think there are two sides to this, right? There's the one side that is a, uh, we could go this route and we could say, okay, you bros owed up here, bro. You don't joke about that kind of shit when clearly your fiance takes this kind of thing very, very, very seriously. You screwed up. And her response in that case would be an NTA. There's another path, though. There is another path here. And I think it is this. I'm not looking at specifically just what is happening with the wedding. I'm looking at the long term success of this relationship. And here's the problem that I see with OP's actions here. What I see with oh, what I see happening with OP's actions is that when she perceived there to be a problem, rather than communicating through it, she took action and canceled this thing. Right? This is something that you discover very early on in marriage or in a relationship. This is one of the hard things that I think you push through. I think you communicate before taking action. She took action, said she wanted to call off the wedding, and then communicated what she had done, which he got upset about. I think the smarter play here would have been to say, "Hey." Let's talk about what you said earlier and really dive into that because I understand you think you were joking, but I feel like there might be some truth in jest with that or it, there's it really bothered me. So we need to we need to work through that conversation here and that coupled with your lack of interest in anything waiting related has me thinking you really don't want to get married. So let's talk about this and figure out figure out where we're really at before we take another step forward. Instead, she took action without having that conversation first. And I feel like to have a long term successful relationship, you've got to start having conversations first before taking drastic action. So for the long term success of the relationship, I don't feel like this was the right move. This might have been the right move, given the circumstances here where he just bros up and maybe he really doesn't give a shit. And maybe he does feel like he's being forced into it. I feel like she could have found that out for real if she had waited to take action and had the conversation first. And that's general 
health of relationship, not necessarily wedding related. If you, yeah, if people had good communication, we wouldn't have 80% of our stories. You're right. All right. So, so just forget what I said about trying to, trying to heal the communication part of this. Keep screwing it up because we, we need stories. Stories are ammo for content for us. So sounds like his truth came out as jokes. Yeah. It's the, it's the whole truth and jest kind of thing. It's possible. But again, I feel like if I, I say stupid shit, it happens. And I feel like if candy thunder took, took one of the randomly stupid things that I say and took action on it without talking to me about it first, it would be, I would miss a gigantic opportunity to explain or be able to correct a situation. And I feel like that in a successful relationship is something that has to happen at some point. You've got to learn how to communicate through problems instead of, instead of just taking the ball and going home. You know what I mean? She was so set on wanting his help to plan, but gave him no option on canceling. That's weird. Elizabeth Tully says, well, I think at that point she had given him enough opportunities to get involved. He, he declined every opportunity or every, every turn where she asked for his input. So she stopped asking. And then, uh, yeah, then he didn't have a say anymore. And when it comes to canceling a wedding, I mean, it's a, it's one of those things that requires two yeses or one. No, right? Like if it's not happening, it's not happening, but she took his joke seriously enough that she felt like that coupled with his disinterest in the wedding was just him not wanting to do it. Again, I think it should have been a conversation, but, but he bros owed up and she's, she's NTA here for doing what she's doing. I I do think there was another play that could have been really good for them growing as a couple. Uh, Jenny. Yeah. Good point here. Jenny H says, yeah, yeah, no, they aren't ready. A hundred percent. No matter what, they aren't ready. They aren't ready for this. Um, Now, most people aren't ready whenever they get married. And year one of being married is really hard because it's really hard to be ready to spend your life with someone when you haven't done that yet. Right. So, I mean, Candy Thunder and I, year one was really hard because we're learning to communicate. We're learning communication styles. We're learning how to work through big problems and serious conversations. You don't learn those things with a person until you go through them. This could have been an opportunity. Uh, but Jeanette, to your point here, yeah, this this sounds like it was the last straw kind of situation here. Last straw. Delayed the wedding and went to counseling. Yeah. Well, and she did say that she can work with him on figuring that out, but can't keep a wedding timeline. So maybe when she says cancel, she means that date is now not the date. Um, so maybe she effectively did, did just postpone. <clears throat> Plot bug. Yeah. Plot bug. I have not screwed up saying once. Knock on wood. Haven't done it. 1575 and 25 hundo on the tiny dinies to get the super spicy, spicy story unlocked here. Uh, Taraya, you were, you were ready, but it was also your second. Honestly, his communication is solid. <laughs> uh, uh, so a plot bug, I saw your comment here says, I'll get you one day, dusty. Uh, I saw that as I'll get you one, one day, dusty. And I'm like, hold on now. Lessons um, were learned. Yeah. Just a note on the spicy story. It has not one, but two updates to it. A double update spicy story. And the other day I was reading this story and I was like, What? What? And Dusty was like, you're right over there. I'm like, I'm just reading this story. It's got I'm just reading this craziness over it's, here. Yeah, it's crazy. Just reading the craziness here. Okay, hang on. Let me let me see if I can figure this thing out now. I, I gotta be able to go to the booth cam, right? There it is. There's Tony Spark, everybody. Give him a wave. There we are. Caden Thunder's right there as well. Caden Thunder just pulled back in, so she'll be back in here in a second here. Mary, yeah, don't forget to follow Tony Spark uh, at Tony Spark underscore. Why do we I keep it. forgetting that? Don't forget yeah. to follow Tony's at Tony Spark underscore. I had some great camera work with with the golf video I posted the other day. I was pretty proud of myself. Yeah. You got to check it. You got to check it out. Very nice. You should go check it out, everybody. <laughs> what you visibly saw on his face when Dusty's cheeks clench up. Wait, what? <laughs> what? What? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. And somebody had a question, you know, if if TikTok ends up disappearing in the US, are we going to go live on YouTube for sure? We will do that. I, I think we're a long way from that happening. But but yeah, we will we will definitely pivot hard to TikTok and, and I'm sorry, to YouTube. So if something ends up happening and uh, and you, 
You try to open up TikTok and nothing's there. Come look for us on the YouTube side. We'll be there. We'll be there. Yes, we do have a Twitch as well. Um, it, and to to remind some people that may not have been here earlier, whenever I, I said this in the intro, I'm actually going to be jumping on Twitch some for some late night sessions here soon to actually do some gaming because we have to do X number of streams on Twitch to be able to start monetizing on that side. So I'm going to try to check that box by doing some gaming streams. It won't be stories. If you see that I'm live on Twitch, do pop in and say hi and chat with me for a little bit, though, because I'll, be, I'll just be getting my butt kicked at Call of Duty. We'll see. Uh, Insta, I don't know that we're going live on Insta yet, but uh, but YouTube will definitely be the the way to go. We could probably do Insta, but we've got to check some boxes on that side here too. Fane, Animal, Elise Newman, Candace with an I, Lulu, Animal, Elise, Christina Fish, Aaron Day Newton, Cranky Grandma, Katisi, Brooke, Mary, you guys are awesome, Unicorn Goddess, Luna Rose, Patrice, see you there as well, Adventures with Pam K, you too, you too there, you too. Uh, so it's... I haven't done a lot of gaming. The last gaming that I did, the last time I was serious about gaming at all, which is not serious at all, uh, was probably you know over a year ago when I was squatting up with with Candy Thunder's brother Ryan and playing Call of Duty, playing Warzone a little bit more. I'm terrible at it, but that's not really the point. Um, and finally, two days ago, started the downloading of the newest Call of Duty, and I, I'm just doing some some multiplayer in Modern Warfare Three now. That's it. Now, yeah, but Tony Spark does play this game as well. And we did talk about having him squat up with me when when I go live on on Twitch. Tony Spark might play, but it's, it's not it's not good. It's, not, it's you don't not have to good. be good to to yeah. stream gaming. You I just mean, have if to you be guys fun. Want, if you guys want to watch me stream some NASCAR, I could get on there and do that. But that, no, I like Call of Duty though. It's like what did we talk about the other day? It's not much of a stress reliever. It's not a stress reliever at all because we just no. get angry that we're not good at it. Yes, it's like like drinking a Red Bull. Like it's I played like, when you and when you don't play for a long time and then you hop on and play, you're like, wow, I am genuinely garbage yep. at this game. Caden Thunder does play, too. Yeah, he could jump on there with us. It could be a very, very different kind of stream. So so we'll see. You may see me randomly on there. If you do come say hi, it'll be fun. Uh, okay, 1975 at 25 hundo on the tiny dinies. We're moving in the right direction to unlock that Sapisi multi update story. Until then, we will keep pushing forward here. Uh, we did determine NTA on this for her calling off the wedding. Um, again, though, I think if you look at this as a long, if you look in, in the long term success of the relationship, this probably could have been handled differently. But in this specific, really just micro focused on the wedding part of this. Yeah. I mean, you're NTA. NTA. God name is Death Call. Heck yeah. Uh, I'm I'm Dusty Thunder on there, believe it or not. Twitch, I am actually. If you go to Linktree, my Twitch um my Twitch icon is on there. You can get there that way. I'm pretty sure it's Dusty Thunder Live though. <laughs> Plutbug, pretty sure your cod name is also Plutbug. Oh my gosh. Natalie Ford da, 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 just downloaded the Bluey game. Oh snap! We'll have to see what happens with that. We may just be streaming Blame Bluey. It may happen. All right, here we go. Next story we're diving into is from the AITA subreddit, and this one is titled, Am I the astronaut for threatening to quit my job because my wife just randomly quit hers? My 35 male wife, 33 female, inherited a large chunk of her late father's sizable estate. She may... She made it very clear that the money she inherited was supposed to go to her dad's bloodline, also known as her and our children, 13 female, 9 male, that I am not entitled to a cent of it. We live in North Dakota, and I make 52 k a year doing a property management job that I hate. It gets old driving around, dealing with tenants who take their frustration out on me because my boss decided to cut corners. My wife worked as an accounts payable clerk making 32 k she hated her job because there was no growth and it was boring, but she held the job to show her dad she was responsible. Her dad passed and she now inherited a five bedroom mortgage free house in another state. It's in one of the most HCOL high cost of living areas near a private college where nearly all the students come from East Coast private schools. She rented out the house. To, she rented out the house by bedroom to students and gets six K a month when it's all said and done. The rest of her inheritance is locked in a trust that pays out 15 k a month. Living in North Dakota, the approximately $252,000 she gets is more than enough to live well. However, I feel my wife has been unfair with how she's handled the money. Right away, she rented herself a BMW. 
Wow, going going hard for it. And then she decided she was done cooking and would order out every day. The problem the problem is I have high cholesterol and a lot of the foods aren't good for me. And the foods that are that are good for me, she never leaves enough real leftovers. I can stomach the fact that her inheritance is hers, but it does hurt that I've never resisted picking up the financial burden when I earned more, but she hoards all of her new money. She put in she put her inheritance, disbursements, and rent income all into accounts under her name. And meanwhile, our day job incomes kept going into joint bank accounts. That would make sense, but then she quit her job out of the blue last week. She said she looked at her boss, 50 female, and that she was not cut out to work until she was old like... Oh, wait, what? She said she looked at her boss, 50 female, and that she was not cut out to work until she was old like her. She wants, she wants to purse her passion for photography, but doesn't want to earn money from it, so she quit. But the problem is that she quit because she gets 250k, basically effort free. I don't benefit from that, but still have to pay for the mortgage and other household expenses since she refuses to pay for them, citing it is joint expenses. We get into a fight. We got into a fight, and I threatened to quit my job too if we were all quitting jobs now because work is hard. Her rationalization was that she buys takeout every day for us now, so my job was enough to pay for our mortgage. I asked that if she wants to upgrade houses like she upgrades cars, I'm guessing the new house won't be in my name. Will I have to pay the maintenance and contribute to mortgage payments? She said I should. She said I should have to because it will be living expenses that I would benefit that I would benefit from just as much as her. Am I the astronaut for being annoyed at her selfishness? Well, that is a different question, right? Okay, so there's there's two questions here. Am I the astronaut for threatening to quit my job because my wife just randomly quit hers? And then am I the astronaut for being annoyed at her selfishness? Uh, I think we can operate based on the assumption that this is one of the states where inheritance, your your spouse or partner has no claim to at all. Um, but but I think you learned something here, OP. I think you learned that when she has the means to not need you, she doesn't need you. And since she doesn't need you, she doesn't really care. And that's a tough thing to find out. Candy Thunder, if you inherited a bajillion dollars tomorrow, would you start treating me like shit and eventually leave me? I'd hope not. I think what you learned here, OP, is that is that is that the, your relationship with your wife was largely largely based on dependence. And now that she's not dependent on you anymore, really doesn't give a shit. And that sucks. That's tough. That's a tough thing to find out. That's a really tough thing to learn. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, saying that if she does upgrade, if she does choose a bigger house now because she's got this income coming in, OP is like, am I going to have to contribute to that as as well, even though my name's not going to be on it based on how everything's going so far? And she said yes. So, uh, yeah, she's essentially choosing money over you on the daily now. And that... Uh, Money makes people behave in very, very strange ways. I think you're finding out how selfish your wife is right now, right? You're, you're truly discovering how selfish she is right now. And that has changed her into a different person. I think you're going to have to communicate through this. Um, yeah, the whole 50 is old. Uh, what? What? <laughs> house of violations. Yeah, this this is where Hoza would be, would be pretty handy. Um, and... It, AITA for being annoyed at her selfishness. No. Am I the asking for threatening to quit my job because my wife randomly quit hers? She didn't randomly quit hers. There was there was a reason behind it. You unfortunately don't have the ability to quit yours because um because while she was dependent on you for a long time, uh you cannot be dependent on her because she will not allow it. So you can't. You get threatened to. The only person that's gonna hurt is you because she She's got enough money to to cover it now and really it seems like could care less if you're there or not. So, yeah, it is an empty threat. It, it definitely is an empty an empty threat. The threatening to quit your job, uh, like it's not going to accomplish anything. I don't think she's going to give a shit. I'm going NTA here, period, across the board, because the situation that you're in right now, I, I, I imagine would be super frustrating. But you're finding out that that the person you've been married to for a long time really only was with you because she was dependent on you. You have two kids, though, right? 13 and 9. Ah. 
that's super unfortunate. Uh, the, yeah, it, I, it feels like these people should not be married right now, but you've you've got two kids involved here as well. And judging by what we know so far, yes, she's going to have them set up and she's going to take care of them just fine. But when they're with you, there's going to be a stark contrast. So uh, I, I don't expect her to make that easy. Um, it will it, it will become complicated here. House of Violet, yeah, uh, two happy homes are better than one miserable one for sure. We've we've seen that over and over again. I don't. I have a feeling one of these homes are not going to be happy because I think OP's partner here is going to end up finding out that money can't buy happiness. She's trying to buy happiness right now. I think it's it's going to lead to it's going to lead to an empty cup. And let's see what happens. Get a good lawyer and get alimony. I don't think they can tap into. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, we just talked about it. An inheritance. I don't think that they can tap into inheritance for alimony, but it, that could vary state by state too. We hit the tiny dinies, which means that we can get into the double spicy story now. We're also at 58% of the likes goal. We're almost ready to hit 300K likes, and we're going for 500K. We're rocking. We're rocking. She's getting 250K per year from uh, the, the rental income and from the trust. So she's, yeah. Wouldn't be bad for not, you know, not having to do hardly anything. Just 250k a year, just free and clear. I'll take it. Dr. Sweet in the number one spot here. Then Cali Pru, Animal 79792, AK Mary, Adventures with Pam, Elise Newman, Tresha G, Gracie Lane, Sue Ann, Fanny, Fanny Y. Is that Fanny from Wyoming? Olivia and Sons and Hot Oxen, Kimberly P, Heather Reagan, Lig. Lil G Dog 2001, and then we've got Becky Morby, Fane 13, Tony Spark, an A414, Natasha. Oh, let's see if I can get it right. Dorte. Natasha Dorte. Leah Thania, Snowman Collector, RJ McHale, Janet Lopez, Dylan Sprague, Maori Rocks, MJ Newcomb, Loves Animals 106, V Baby, Sergeant Mac, Tanya D, aka T, Queenie E33, Erica Eternal, La La, Reef Ride, Rena Bean, Sharon Day Newton, Not That Ellen, I Am Jill 21, Brooklyn Baby 777, Tammy Lee, Katisi, AIs, Lady Legions, Biz OB, Trini Marie 83, and 10th anniversary of. We'll show you the rest of the username there. Thank you guys so much. Y'all are amazing. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Since it's become income, it's no longer an inheritance. The rental income, yeah. I mean, the, the trust, the trust payments she's getting are probably still, um, probably still inheritance. But, but the rental income, yeah. Good point. That is good point. All right, let's set up the new goal and then we'll dive into this monster of a spicy reward store here this one is going to unlock a cake story and a caden thunder appearance here cake and caden we have how many of these 50 550 donuts is what we're going for here let me pin that real quick and now we'll jump right back over to it rapper k North and South Dakota allow it to be decided. Interesting. Interesting. Hey, yo, here we go. All right. Spicy reward story time. I gotta, gotta get hydrated for that. If it's a double update, it's gonna be a long read, right? It's not? Okay. Just spicy? Hey, fundraising habit. Good to see you there. Late nights with Lisa, and thanks so much for the shares there. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, his rapper name is K Thunder. I like Special K. I like. I think your. I think your rap name, Caden Thunder, should be Special K. Special K. I don't. I don't think he likes it. <laughs> Joey, we've been trying to catch up on the podcast on Spotify. and Made it to November 2023. Hey, you're getting there. You're getting there. We have not put the the 24 hour on Spotify, but we ha we are adding compilations from the stories that were covered in the 24 hour to Spotify. So, do you know, did we did we decide to I think we have like four compilations that are going to be posted on one day, right? From the 24 hour. 
You know what date that's going out? 21st? 23rd of March? 23rd of March is what we're looking at tentatively. But there's going to be like four compilations dropping at one in one day. So that'll be a monstrous day. That'll be monstrous. Okay, here we go. Sorry, I was getting wrapped up in the music. Uh, any updates on that Cindy girl that sat on the dude's lap? Not that I know of. Hey, Gabby, good to see you. Thanks for being here, everybody. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Deidre Serial. Yeah, special. Okay. This is the spicy reward story. Strap in. This is a wild ride. It is from the anti-work subreddit. First time I'm seeing that. My boss opened a credit card in my name and did the same thing to two coworkers. Oh, shh. <laughs> right off the rip. That is no bueno. As if being underpaid at my job isn't enough. I just found out that my boss opened up a credit card in my name. I work at a mom and top type business. I work at a mom and top. I work at a mom and pop type business in graphic design. And my boss is the same guy who hired me. Two days ago, I got a call from Capital One asking about unusual charges on my credit card. The rep went over a couple of charges, and I had literally no idea what she was talking about. I told them it looked like those charges weren't on my app, and the rep said she tried calling it a different phone number, but it was disconnected. She confirmed I had two credit cards through them, but I only have one. The rep told me my other account, my actual account, had no strange charges, but a different one opened up opened only in December, was nearing its credit limit, and there were two large charges at different Walmart stores. I asked for the address on the accounts, and one was mine. The other, which I had no idea about, was the address for my was the home address for my boss. They canceled the card and said I might get contacted by their fraud department. Yesterday, I told my team about it, and two of them immediately chimed up that they had their identity stolen last month with credit cards opened up in their name. The boss, who works remotely, told about a dozen of us at the end of November that we needed to fill out updated W-9s because the company was moving to a new system and sent and send them to him. One of them ran home on lunch and grabbed the letter they were sent from the credit card company. The phone number is one number off of our boss's cell phone number, and the address is to a UPS store in the town where he lives. I've put a lot. I've put up. With a lot working here, but this is absolutely the last straw. The work environment is middling at best, but the pay is horrible. I'm calling in sick today and starting to look for something else that actually works for me and pays at least what I'm worth. What else should I, what else should I be doing other than calling the cops? Huh? <clears throat> this is, yeah, that's a felony. That's, 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 I mean, call the cops first thing and talk through with them and figure out what you need to be doing here. Talk to a lawyer. Like there, there needs to be. Holy crap. Um, edit. Thanks so much for the advice. I'm going to post an update as soon as I have one. And we do have the update here as well. But that is, yeah, yeah. Oh, this, this is like a group lawsuit. Like, I, how many people do you have to have to have a class action? I don't know. Uh, but this is nuts. How do, how do you even, how does it even happen? And also, how desperate do you have to be to start opening up credit cards in other people's names? wouldn't how how is that an option how is that how is that the route that you think is going to save you that's just that's just deciding to take a whole bunch of other people down with you i know that's terrible okay update one my company put the manager on unpaid leave a couple of days after they were contacted by a detective about the open cards oh wait so this is this is a manager okay so it's not the business owner Four of us ended up filing police reports on the same day. A couple days later, I got an alert from the credit monitoring company saying someone tried opening a Discover card in my name. They put a stop to that. Still freaking doing it after people found out? One of my coworkers got a call back from the detective on Tuesday and told him a judge signed off on a warrant for identity theft. I forget the exact term for the criminal complaint last week. Apparently, the detective was able to get video footage from a store of our boss using a credit card registered in the coworker's name. Our boss also drove a car registered to him and from the store, all visible on surveillance. The detective said the sheriff's department or state's attorney department made sure to include the boss's state in the extradition limits for the warrant. My coworker said the reason the detective called was because the detective was called by another detective in the city where our boss lives. Cops in that city have tried pulling him over three times in the last month, with the last time being on Monday. All three times, he just doesn't stop. What? 
Is that an option? Wait, they tried pulling him over, but all three times he just didn't stop. I, I didn't know that was an option. I wait, wait, what? Ah, the place has a zero pursuit policy. So they have to let him go and they think he might be armed. What the fuck? Okay, hold on a second. I, I like how is it? How is it that Washington state has a no pursuit law? I understand. I, I understand, you know, pursuits can put additional people in in danger and they're doing this to limit collateral damage. But the problem with the no pursuit policy is that criminals then know that you have a no pursuit policy and all they have to do is run. This doesn't seem like a foolproof plan here. Doesn't seem like a good idea. Or, or if you are going to do that, you have to have some alternative that prevents the chase from happening or being needed in the first place, right? You can't just say, oh, if you run, we're not going to chase you. That's That's pretty much it. That's just the extent of it. The house where he is supposed to be living is emptied out as well. The detective from my city told my coworker he's still waiting on other surveillance footage in regards to the rest of the complaints, including mine, and they'll likely be added on as additional counts, but they want to get him into custody first. From what it sounds like, he'd have to go through the system on his felony, a looting charge first. Then he could be extradited here to see a judge about the identity theft. Wow. Uh, edit. I followed the advice from this post comments. Uh, OP references here. You need to tell all of your coworkers to check their credit immediately. You're also going to want to call the police like today. If he did, if he did it to you and a couple of others, my guess is he's probably doing it to every single person who sent him that W nine. I'd take a couple of immediate steps. If I were you get a police report, because if the credit card companies think you might be lying, they'll do what they can to screw you over. Start a credit monitoring service like this one and check your credit. If he's opening one credit card in your name, he might have opened several. Freeze your credit so that he can't do any more damage. You said you work for a small company. I don't know if you have an HR department, but that would be my next stop. If you don't, time to hit up the owners, but don't tell them you're about to leave. Okay, we have another update to go through here. Box him in. Yeah. Tax strips, something, something. So, this my, is the update where it gets wild. Oh, oh, it's not wild yet. Wow. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, oh. you miss living in Washington because they don't have any uh, high speed chases. Update two. Final update. I had mostly forgotten about this post until a few days ago. Wouldn't say it was a happy ending. The silver lining is that it only took about three weeks and the card that wasn't mine and the card that wasn't mine was out of my name. My credit score went up like 90 points. I also started a new job with a decent pay bump and far more time off. A couple of months ago, my boss, sorry, words are hard. A couple of months ago, my old boss who was fired ended up getting unalived in a car accident. Wait, what the fuck is Happening. About a day later, it came out that he had most likely unalived an elderly woman and stole her car. Her daughter went to her house, and when she didn't answer the phone and found her mother uh, unalived and her car and purse missing, his car was parked on the street a block away. Apparently, he fled police stops another three or four times before crashing into a metal electric pole with no seatbelt. He was fleeing from the police again in the stolen car. They found illegal substances and a pew pew inside. Okay, well, I guess the no chase policy doesn't really keep any people safe now, doesn't it? Because this kind of shit happens. I got a call from a lawyer because I was one of the ones who reported the credit card fraud. We talked for maybe 10 minutes about what happened to me, and he filled me in a bit about what happened since. There are now two lawsuits going through the works, supposedly. One is from the family of the woman he probably unalived. They're, they are saying the police failed to apprehend him before she got unalived. The lists, that lists all the police departments and cities involved. Wow. The other is from his family going after the sheriff's department and county, which chased him and led to the crash. I doubt I have to testify as the lawyer was mainly concerned about the specific events leading to me knowing it was my old boss who stole my identity. It sounds to me like everyone is going for settlement money. Just figured I'd let everybody know what happened. Too long, don't read. He won't be stealing anyone else's identity anymore. Holy shit. God, can you imagine being wrapped up in this mess in any way, shape, or form? Can you imagine just having your life turned upside down by somebody who just like flagrantly is just like, I'm taking everybody down with me. 
and gives zero shits about who they harm and how in the process. This had to be some kind of of, of uh, addiction fueling or yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Like there's desperation and then there's just madness. And, and desperation will cause you to do some crazy things, but but addiction will cause you to do this kind of shit. Now, now. All the people in this case now suing police departments because of the shit that happened and they failed to apprehend him. I guess that's one of the downsides of of that that. No pursuit policy. I don't know. They definitely do pursuits here. So, uh, man, I just can't imagine being being in this mess at all. More nuts than spicy. Agreed. V, thanks for the share. Hey, Ice Wizard, thanks for the follow. Tinoy with the follow there as well. Thank you so much. Nikki Bernal with the share there, too. Thanks so much for that. We're at 340 or 550 on the donut goal right now. This was bonkers like this. Uh. This seems like an episode of Law and Order or something like that. House of Violations. Yeah, he's in hell getting tortured by old ladies that were victims of ID theft. Yeah, entirely possible. I, I said Law and Order and <laughs> the peanut gallery over here is just going bong bong. Repeatedly. Repeatedly. V with a share there. Savannah Reb with a share as well. And uh, Samantha with a follow. Cat Neil with the share, VP with the share, DL Herd with the follow there. Thanks so much, Cat Neil. User 617, lots of other numbers with the follow. Cat Neat, Cat Neat with the shares there too. Savannah, uh, Jeanan, Jeanan or Jean Ann, Jean Ann. Thanks for the share there as well. Greatly appreciate it. Ruth, uh, Ruth Mangum, Tate Weirdo, Debbie Sayers, Gaming Trash. Hartsy Fartsy, Justice, Jillian DeMars, Alex is a Dragon, Alicia Jorgensen with the shares there too. Alex is a Dragon with a lot of them. Thank you guys so much. Naomi, you as well there. Thank you so much. Uh, I think it was Tacoma. Oh, somebody from Washington has heard this. Oof. Oof. I mean, this would be, this would just be madness to be involved in at all. <laughs> it's always a Tacompton. Is that how you say it? A Tacompton. By the way, has nothing to do with the price of tea in China either, but uh, they have a, a Tacoma Trail Hunter coming out truck that that looks super sharp. Random note. Look it up when you get a minute. Okay. the uh, We read through story five. We're on six now, correct? Four, four. We're at 80% of the donut goal right now, so we're still pushing through that way. We do have a cake story and Caden Thunder to unlock with that. We are at almost 80% of the likes goal right now of 500K likes. We're about to hit 400K, so heck yeah. Heck yeah. Alex, thanks so much. Greatly appreciate it. Straight up knocking futs. Yep. Fuster cluck knocking futs. Goodness. All right. Our next story comes from the AITA subreddit. And this one is titled, Am I the Askonaut for Letting My Girlfriend Be Homeless? It seems like uncomfortable. I started dating my longtime friend about seven months ago, and while I've always had a crush on her and loved her personality, she has a recurring problem. She has a hard time finding or keeping a residence for long periods. She has no family that is responsible enough to turn to, and her friends are all either moved out of state or married with children, so she doesn't have many places to turn to. Not long after we started dating, about a week, she confessed to me that she was behind on her bills. Rent, car payments, to the point that she couldn't provide for herself. Being a longtime friend and now boyfriend, I helped her out by giving her $700 so she could write her sales. That helped until she fell ill and missed a week of work so she so she would be behind on payments again. She suffers from a compromised immune system, so I wasn't, a go- I wasn't going to hold that against her. I gave her another $1,000 to cover expenses so she could have more than enough to make up the upcoming payments and still eat. Then her uncle ruins the relationship between her and her landlord, meaning she only has a month to find a new place to live. She refuses to live with a roommate, and after a month, I convinced my parents to let her live with us and my room rent-free. Not long after she moves in, she quits her job. They were abusive to the point of law-breaking, and she looks for a new one taking about a month or so to do that. I pay all of her costs at this time for another $600-ish. Then she lands a job at a chain coffee shop and needs a new wardrobe for the dress code. I front the bill for that and the makeup for about $1,000, including makeup and new clothes. She starts the job and is immediately harassed by staff for her short height, some not even helping her get things from high shelves. She then falls ill, ill with COVID and misses more than a week of work. 
The coffee shop demands she take a leave of absence. The coffee shop demands she take a leave of absence for some reason, but we decide she should look into getting her older job back. I pay her expenses now for another $700 ish. And she goes back to her old job. Now, after four months and able to make money, my folks want her to leave having overstayed her welcome, but she doesn't want a roommate and wants to get a house with me, a goal I've been saving up for, for nearly a year at that point. Now she's living with a coworker until the end of the month and will be homeless after, unless I find and close on a house. She's upset that it isn't happening fast enough for her, but I feel like I've done a lot for her already and she needs to square her rigging and find a place to rent with a roommate until I have saved up enough to buy a house. Am I the astronaut? Also, this guy definitely sails like all of his analogies are, are sailing related here. Rider rigging and, uh, and square sail or yeah, square sales and rider rigging. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, dude definitely sales, uh, was brought up in that. So the, the question is, am I the astronaut for letting my girlfriend be homeless? He is in this. Let me try to do the math real quick. Okay. He's already in this for there's 1700, 23, 3,300, 4k. He's 4k into this already. Just like buying wardrobes and, and paying her bills. Uh, to this point and that's i don't know how long that's been what four months or so but he's he's 4k into this already uh and, and without having further explanation about you know the only source he has to understand like what was wrong with the previous workplace he said they were abusive to the point of it being unlawful but now she's wanting to go get that job back and also i can't imagine that that people would be so mean about someone's height that it would force them to leave the job like maybe that's a hazing them getting to know or just giving her a hard time kind of thing i don't know it's not cool but but i don't feel like you're getting the full story here op and 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 i feel like it's scenario after scenario after scenario where you just magically have to pay for things and now you're trying to close on a house so you guys can live together but she doesn't feel like it's happening fast enough for her there's an escalation happening here and the, and it's dangerous and i'm not saying that what she isn't what she's going through isn't real and that it's that's a very very difficult thing but you have to accept that you are facilitating and probably enabling to a point um this this cycle of this cycle of, of problems and now oh, what she would what would she have done if you weren't around there to pick up the tab for this 4k worth of problems at some point you got to teach somebody to fish rather than just feed them right at some point there has to be there has to be some independence that is learned here and i think you have to look at yourself and say am i just enabling a problem right now or am i truly helping somebody stand up it's it's a a hand up, not a hand out, right? And I think if you can figure out a way to to make turn your caring for this person into a hand up rather than a hand out, that would be worthy. Right now, you're just you're you're handing out, and I don't know if that's gonna end well. It doesn't feel like it. Oh yeah, rent free at his parents' house for months, so we don't have a mathematical value to throw on that. But he's four K into this, and also that. Miss Helene, what coffee shop makes you wear $1,000 worth of uniforms? Well, makeup is included in there, too. But that's a lot. That's a lot of money. How many? Like, how, would you need 20, 20 identical uniforms and makeup? Even then, like you're, that's a lot. That's a lot, Elise, yeah. Wore out her welcome, says a lot. They were probably watching, watching their child, you know, uh, shell out 4k worth of money for this person and been like yeah she's worn out her welcome she can't stay here anymore uh ugh. I, 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 it feels like she's lying stephanie or at least not not revealing the whole truth it's just it can't just be that like this this crazy cataclysmic shit keeps happening to her that over and over and over again that cycle has to be stopped somewhere and there has to be a certain el um, element of choice choice involved with that too a house of violations five foot two and i can reach anything on the top shelf on my own independent yeah constant victim there you go overkill <laughs> that may be that may be the way to look at it if this person is a constant victim of the world and of life and if that's the cycle that they found themselves stuck in they i'm sure that she truly believes that i'm sure she truly believes that that she's a victim of every single one of these situations that's why that hand up instead of the handout is so important
because otherwise it's just it's a, it's a legit cycle. It's a cycle. I hope that the makeup that he bought was like the like the Johnny Rose makeup that he got for Stevie. It's like the big kit that's like way overkill and she probably doesn't really want, but he thought he was doing a good thing. I hope it's like that. Hey, we hit the donut goal. Let's talk about that for a second, and then we'll get Caden Thunder up here and then read a cake story. Animal 792 leading the board here. Uh, G de Mars 6. GDE Mars. Uh, Keith Cool, Sue Ann. I am Jill 21. Adventures with Pam, Patrice Welch, and Hartson. Janet Lopez, Hoon 2010. Katisi, AK Mary, Callie Peru, Strawberry Disco. Becky Morby, uh, Snowman Collector, Jeep Angel, Melted Crayon. Can I get a rescue on 15 Beyond there, please? Also, Rebecca Juju Girl, Jill Meineke, Crystal, Dark Angel, Alicia Smith, Becky Houghton, Houghton, Becky Houghton, Allison and Luna, Jackie Kelly, Deidre, The Quiet Knitter, Katisi, you guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Becky Morby, Snowman Collector, Jeep Angel, Melted Crayon, CKNY79, Mama Jams, Ms. No, Amy B, Queenie, Crashly Nicole. I like that name. Crashly. Mags Mazing, Dana 9480, Just the Julie, Jackie Kelly, Find Your Peace 15, Anna 8207, and Windy Bloods. Thank you so much, guys. Greatly appreciate the love there. We're going to get Caden Thunder up here. Let me get the next goal set up. This one is going to unlock some confetti. We haven't shot confetti today yet. We've been taking it easy on the confetti since the 24 hour live. We did consume a lot of confetti on the 24 hour live, though. There was there was a lot. It was a lot. All right. This will be confetti. And we are doing paper cranes. We have 90 paper cranes set up here. What if she has a compromised immune system? Would she be on disability? Uh, potentially. Potentially. Yeah, my tea had a lot of confetti in it too. I remember. Oh, flashback. Something I hadn't thought about until you mentioned it, Sebecca. Yeah. Confetti was like landing in my tea. It was weird. Animals sending all kinds of paper cranes through. All right, let's get them up here. The one and only. I was trying to push a button way over here. I don't know what I'm doing. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ah, I can hear myself. Yeah. Ooh. I'll do me, boo boo. How's everybody doing? It's me. It's Caden Thunder. Hello. How's everybody doing today? What's uh, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Caden Thunder Show. It's me, your host, Caden Thunder. We talk about things. Talk about things and stuff. What's what? What has happened since the last live in your life? Since the last live, what's happened in my Please. life? Concerts. Uh, I went to a Drake concert, uh, with J Cole. I went to, went to see Drake and J Cole. That was pretty cool. That was entertaining. Shout out Drake. <laughs> I was just talking to him. Yeah, shout out Drake. He's watching, for sure. Oh, uh, I have sworn off The Bachelor. I'm done with it. Um, The Bachelor is no more. No more Bachelor reviews from Caden. I gave it up. They they sent Maria home, so I don't care anymore. Sorry, guys. Um, Yeah, I saw Drake. I uh, Yeah, I quit The Bachelor. They invited me to be on it next time, but I was like, nah. <laughs> yeah. They sent Maria home. That's why I stopped watching it. That's that's why. Like, y'all know. If y'all watching it, y'all know. We were all Team Maria. Don't lie. So, they did they have a lot of J. Cole merch? Yeah, they had a lot of Dreamville merch and stuff. I didn't buy any of it. I wanted a hoodie, but it was like $250, so. That's nuts. I, I didn't have that. I didn't have that type of cash to be spending, but I would have I would have bought it if I could, but yeah. Shout out Maria. She, she definitely should have won.
I know. It, it was so stupid. Yes, I am Dusty's son. I am Caden Thunder. I I um I am the son of my father. The eldest son, my namesake. I guess not. Hey, you hit the likes goal too. Confetti time, let's do it. Wait, we did it. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah. Hey. It's it's like raining little pieces of glory. Yeah. Confetti. Confetti. Hey, you wanna you wanna read our our thanks here? I'll read. I'll try. Let's do it. I'll attempt it. Okay, here we go. Right here. Um, here. I can bring. No, I can't bring those over. All right, just this top ten right here. Yep. All right, everybody. Uh, shout out to Animal underscore seven nine two, Amanda Mills five, Cali Prue nineteen eighty seven. Uh, Adventures with Pam. Adventures with Pam. Sue Ann 257. Rebecca 448. The Quiet. Quiet Knitter. The Quiet Knitter. I am Jill 21. Nicole P0211. And Crystal Gilmore. Everybody, give, hey, a, oh. give a little round of applause to yourselves because you y'all popping out there. Y'all, y'all doing the good stuff. Y'all doing the, the work. The work that needs to be done. You know, doing the work, doing the work, standing putting on in, business, standing on business, putting in the, the, the energy. You got that good energy. You uh, y'all know what's up. You got, yeah. All right, yeah. So <laughs> let me type on here real quick. You can you can keep we'll going, type. man. You're so yeah. How are you guys doing? How's the, uh, what's uh yeah. I'm I know we're we're upset that I'm not doing the Bachelor anymore, but. I just, I, he, he upset me by sending Maria home. I would be fine with, with Kelsey winning too, Kelsey A, but, um, I don't know. If he picks Daisy, I don't know. I don't have anything against Daisy either. Daisy's cool too, but it's just not Maria, you know? Y'all know. Y'all know what I'm doing. Y'all know. Y'all know. Y'all know. I'm going to get back to our yeah. normal scene here. Yeah. And still, it's, it's still shout out to homie Drake. Likes uh, goal was it. We're likes on goal. Fire. We're on fire you now. Guys you guys are. are on 2K. I haven't started Peaky Blinders yet. No, I don't know what I'm... Thanks. Thanks. Ranked, Ranked number, number two. And what? Yo. C2. Hey, hey yo! Hey, Ranked yo! number two! <laughs> I'm never Rank doing that up. again. Oh, you, got another, you got more confetti. You're covered in it. You're Just enjoying it. You're enjoying a milkshake? Yeah. I've been told I should watch Love is Blind, but right now, I'm watching... I just finished the strain, so. You talked about watching Peaky Blinders too, though, right? No, I've never seen Peaky Blinders. Oh, I want to. About I've, I want to watch it. I've talked about wanting to watch it, but I haven't watched it yet. Because it's just, I have to devote time into what, starting a new show, and I just haven't yet. I'm rewatching Stranger Things. I'm watching the Avatar show. God, Thanks. Nice. Well, more. whenever you launch confetti on me, the confetti's going to be on me. Confetti follows beauty. I mean, what do, what do you say? Yeah. All right, we gotta get into the cake story. All Kate right, Caden Thunder, ladies Bye. and gentlemen. Hey, -o. oh, always enthralling entertainment. He can hardly contain himself ever. We, we you know, we, we do have to, uh, we do have to dose him with a mild sedative every time right before the live, just to make sure he's not too animated whenever it comes up on on screen. You know what I mean? He's uh, he's got too much energy for one person. Too much. Too much. Confetti everywhere. Okay, we have a cake story to read that you all just unlocked. That'll be our final story of the, day, of the day. Meanwhile, we do have the fire goal up here as well. And that is for the helmet. And when we say helmet, we mean the Ascanon helmet. So, yes, the well, the new the new and improved one. It is still from this one's from NASA. The uh, the old school one is from the Smithsonian. So, you know, it's yeah. You didn't realize you have to shorten the camera for a minute. So I have, uh, I, I'm six one. I'm I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty tall dude, uh, or taller guy. Uh, so I have on this desk a couple of different presets, and I have a, a preset that brings it down so it's the perfect height for Tony Spark and Caden Thunder. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's rock and roll here. It is cake story time. This is the second cake reward story of our stream today. This. Story is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Refusing to Participate to a Birthday Gift Since I'm Making the Cake? Am I the Astronaut for Refusing to Participate in a Birthday Gift Since I'm Buying? I'm Words are hard. 
the the title was written a little bit weird. I'm trying to edit it as I as I speak. Am I the astronaut for refusing to participate in a birthday gift since I'm making the cake? I, 33 male, do not live in the U.S. I live alone in France on a very low income. Relevant. It's currently 3 a.m. and I had a situation while eating dinner at my sister's place that is keeping me awake. I need to know if I'm the astronaut here and if I need to apologize. So yesterday I went to eat dinner at my sister's place. It was planned. She knew I was coming. When I arrived, as always, my nephew, 14 male, and my niece, 5 female and 2 female, all came running to me. And after that, I said hello to my sister and my brother-in-law and also my brother-in-law's mother. About my brother-in-law's mother. She mostly lives on a cruise ship. This is how she is living her retirement. So it's given that she isn't around very often. But when she is here, we have or we had a good relationship. So when I arrived yesterday evening, she was sitting on the couch. And when I saw her, I was surprised since I didn't know she was back from her trip. So I went to say hello to her, la bise, as us French do. And I said, oh, hi, nice to see you. She just replied with a very cold hello. I tried to encourage the conversation with questions about how she was doing, how was her last cruise and where she went. But all I got was a very short answer. One or two words, very cold. At dinner, it's the same vibe. My brother-in-law's mother does not participate. She doesn't talk much and just looks at her plate. At the end of the dinner, everyone cleans the table and puts everything away. I took a tray out of my sister's cabinet and put it aside so I could take it home. Seeing this, the grandmother asks what I'm doing. I explained to her that this was the main reason why my sister invited me to eat tonight. I need this tray since I'm the one cooking the cake for my niece's two female birthday this Saturday. With that, she just replied with, I'm sorry, what? Very pointed. And you could hear the anger in her voice. So my sister explained that she asked me to make the traditional birthday cake for our family. Our grandmother used to make this cake while we were growing up for all the birthdays. And now I'm the only one making this cake. And I agreed to make it for Saturday. It won't be a small cake. Around 50 guests should be there. My brother-in-law's mother just shrugged, rolled her eyes and said, Anyway, you still need to give me the hundred pounds for your part of the gift. Forget the cake. I already called and reserved a cake for Saturday from a bakery. To, to that, I reply, um, I'm, I'm sorry, what are you talking about? I didn't know anything about that, and I can't with my finances. I've already bought everything to make the cake, and even without that, uh, 100 pounds is a huge part of my monthly budget. I can't afford it. This is why I'm making the cake. That's my way of participating in the party. Then she started screaming, you're a shame and a disgrace. I just don't understand why the kids love you so much. You're poor. That's your problem. Deal with it. I don't want your trashy homemade cake on the pics of my granddaughter's birthday, and I want my money. She left slamming the door on her way out. Now my brain won't stop. I keep reliving the evening, and I'm wondering if I'm the astronaut because we talked about money. She was expecting for everyone to participate in the gift. I don't know what the gift is. And since she ordered her own cake in a bakery, what if I put her in a difficult position regarding her budget? Uh, that's the end of the story. The question is, am I the astronaut for refusing to participate in a birthday gift since I'm making the cake? Hell no. Uh, she, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and just tip toe out onto a limb here. OP and say that, that you saying you're going to make the cake and not contribute to this group gift is not going to put her in a dire situation because she's living on cruise ships, right? Like she's, she's probably okay. Um, you, on the other hand, it is it is a make or break situation. Make or bake situation. Oh, come on. That was pretty good. Not as good as shellfish, but it was pretty good. Um, yeah. OP and the sister already discussed this. They already discussed with the parents that he was going to be making this cake. They already discussed everything ahead of time. Now she shows up and starts spouting this nonsense. I would be having a conversation with my sister and being like, hey, what is she talking about? What is going on? I don't understand anything that is happening here and just gets just gets jumped with all this information. Candy Thunder has some opinions here. She's going to jump in using her microphone. We'll see it. Uh, not my opinion, but I did. I had to read further into this one, and I did find a comment from someone that said, she is attacking you to take out her hatefulness because if she attacks your sister and her son, they will cut her off. Ah, yeah, but, but for what reason? Just ran, She just pissed about something, random, anything? I think it's ignore this lady, make the cake, make the cake. you're a good aunt, and, and you can ignore this jealous person. Um, I think that she's upset because she wants to plan the party the way that she wants it planned, uh, okay. and the, the mom, the sister doesn't agree with her and i think that's 
like nail on the head with she can't take it out on on the mom because she was so she just found someone else child. okay yeah. gotcha. she just directed her eye of sauron to someone else. yeah okay so she just, she just found someone else to to take out her eye on because she couldn't take it out on who she wanted to take it out on that's plausible i still think a conversation with your sister is warranted at this point op to be like hey what in the hell is happening here because because crazy cruise lady who normally gets along with me fine was just like pissed at me from the beginning i don't know what i did uh so so fill me in also this group group gift thing first i'm hearing of this and now she wants 100 pounds from me just like boof i don't know what do you what do you I, I don't know what to do here please tell me what is happening surely you have some more insight into this so jealous because the kids control or because the kids adore op that's entirely possible too whatever the reason it's oh op answered hey will you make sure you point it like eat the mic OP did respond and said that she's jealous, plain and simple, because he has such an amazing relationship with the grandkids and she chose not to be there. Uh, and so she's taking it out on, uh, okay. on the fact that she doesn't have the relationship she thinks that she should have. So because the kids like him more than they like her, there must be something yeah. wrong with him. And she's <laughs> she's yeah. just taking it, it out said on him. Whenever he got there, they were on the couch with grandma. But as soon as he entered, they got up and literally ran to him. Mm. So this is another one of those cases where you've got a grandma here who is there not for the benefit of the children. She's there to fill up her own cup, spending time with the kids. Right. And he's there for them. Baking a cake for them like he doesn't he doesn't. I don't know. It's that sucks. It sucks to be to be him in that situation. But understand it's not it's not about anything that he did. It's it's a her problem that she's trying to make a him problem. Green ain't your color, Nana. There you go, Sergeant Mac. There you go. Uh, hi, I'm Jersey. We go live on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. U.S. Central Time. And we also go live on Sunday evenings or Sunday nights at, is it 9 or 10? I can't remember. Which, 9? Okay. If you if you said something, I couldn't hear it. Um, at Sunday at 9 U.S. Central as well. So those two days a week. Miss Helene, you didn't get a text today? Well, that's I did. I got my text right before the live started, but it was uh, we are in daylight savings time kicked in Monday. So we sprang ahead. Uh, so we we are now it is now 5, 10 p.m. We're going to we're going to go ahead and shut down and get started for the VIP here. But I think we're I think a lot of people uh, who don't experience daylight savings time and didn't experience the spring ahead. It feels like we're an hour early. Uh, and yeah, because it is an hour earlier for, for your part of the world. Unfortunately, we still get to play the daylight savings time game here. So that's, that's a fun time. That's a fun time. Thanks, Miss Ling. Greatly appreciate it. Nine on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I never know. I don't know. Uh, football comes into play with it, but we should be good for a while with Sunday, Sunday nights, unless something changes. Yeah, uh, the VIP live is going to be in about 10, 15 minutes. We are going to uh, set up in the studio for that. If you're a member of the storm, you should get a notification for that or uh, just come back in about 15 minutes and and you should see on the profile that we're live. The next live stream will be a multi stream, which will be this coming Sunday, the 17th at 9 p.m. U.S. Central Time. We're going to be streaming across TikTok, YouTube and Twitch. And of course, I'll be doing a little bit of Twitch in between now and then maybe. So if you happen to be on there and catch me gaming, come chat with me. And of course, the weekly TikTok Live next week will be at 3 p.m. Central next Wednesday, the 20th. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and check it out. You can find the latest Dusty Thunder podcast episodes there, compilations, all kinds of stuff. Thunder and Spark is on there too, Piano Man, and YouTube exclusive content. VIP is going to be in about 10, 15 minutes. We'll spin the Wheel of Thunder during that live. We got to do it. I, I, I didn't do this today. We got to do the animation. We got to do it. Okay, we're going to be doing Wheel of Thunder. So if you're one of the VIPs, we'll see you here in about 10 to 15 minutes. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Y'all are awesome. Uh, just to take us out here, Diana, uh, Diana Kentony, Diana C. Anthony, Biggie B, Candace with an I, A Flower, Graham with the auto subscribe to stay a member of the Gosh Eckin fam, A Flower there as well, uh, Simo Bannon, Crystal, Ash Tay, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Amanda Mills, Megan Carroll, Kansas with an I again there, Animal Dana 9480, and Hot LMD 10, Marion Gonzalez, Marion, uh, Mary Fogel, Jill, Bridget, McCarty Waldrup, 
LB10, Nat Vaz, TLS. Good to see you there. Uh, also, we may have something heading your way. TLS. And Hodgson, Jenny M, Heidi M, Nicole Perez, Alejandra, Norma Lopez, Tanya D, Cassie Harrelson. You guys are awesome, amazing. Uh, Miss Lady D, Janice. Thank you so much for all the love and the support for doing what we do and for being here and for having fun with us. And uh, we'll see you on VIP live soon. If not, we'll see you next time.